game time for the Bulldog Nation. Time to wrap up the tailgating and get ready for football. FSN South Dog Day Saturday coverage continues with Stafford, Marino, and the Central Michigan game. Georgia football is religion, then this is the shrine, and it's time to fill the pews. 92,746 making their way into historic Sanford Stadium for game two of the 2008 season today. The second-ranked Georgia Bulldogs meet the Chippewas from Central Michigan University. Hi, everybody. Bob Rathman, my partner Dave Rowe. Great to have you with us. You know, Herschel Walker is the gold standard by which oh, yeah. all Georgia running backs are measured. But with each passing game, this precocious sophomore, no Sean Marino, is leaving his calling card as a running back to be reckoned with. Oh, you are absolutely right, Bob. No Sean, everybody compares him to Herschel Walker. But let me tell you something. He's got great vision in the hole. I love the way he sees. I love his enthusiasm. See the way he pops up bangs through tackles. He is an all everything. He's got great lateral moves and he may be stronger than Herschel in that department. Last week he was really disappointed. He cramped up. He only got eight carries. I watch him to really be aggressive today. And of course Marino may be the new rising star here at Georgia but the unquestioned leader of the offense is quarterback Matthew Stafford and here's a guy who has gotten better game by game oh. as well. But it's his leadership responsibilities that impresses you so much. Uh, out front and up number one. That's Matthew Stafford. I've watched him since he was a freshman, and I've watched his maturity, and it's amazing. He jumps out at you. When he was a freshman, he just was a wide-eyed kid. Then all of a sudden, he became a sophomore. He started picking up those defenses. This year, he looks great. And I'll tell you, there's one stat that jumps out at you, and that is touchdowns to interceptions, that ratio. You see the change over the last two years. He's two touchdowns this year, no interceptions. And he set really high goals for himself. He said, hey, I want 3,500 yards. I want 35 touchdowns. I want 60% completions. And I'll tell you this, he may have met his match today, Bob, because right across the field is Dan LaFever. Last year, LaFever threw for 3,600 yards, had 65% completions, only 27 touchdowns passing but he also ran for 19. I'll tell you this Stafford may be looking across the field to see what Lefevre looks like. The Bulldog Nation and the Bulldogs behind us sure hope they've got a cure for Dan Lefevre. When we come back it's time to tee it up between the hedges. We're ready for college football on FSN South our Dog Day Saturday. Features Matthew Stafford and the Georgia Bulldogs against the Chippewas of Central Michigan. Today's kickoff when we come back. Okay, what can we put in those vending machines? Go ahead. Chips. Chips. Excellent. Joel, have a seat. We're on a roll. Potato chips. Potato chips? Oh. Yes. Let's uh, build off of potato chips. Yeah. Crackers. Crackers. Uh, I'm getting hungry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm the crackers with the cheese and the sticks. Oh, yes. I love that. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Joel. You had me flying for this. You betcha. We need you. Maybe we make business trips a little too affordable. Built on a sports car platform, 
with a more fuel-efficient 390 horsepower engine, the all-new Infiniti FX, defining the performance crossover, redefining luxury. One man, eight minutes, 60 Crystal Burgers. Paul Hunt just earned his place at the finals of Crystal Square Off 5, the World Hamburger Eating Championship. The biggest names in Major League Eating are battling it out right now for a spot at the Crystal Square Off 5 final table. And I'll see you at the championship. Where they'll face defending champion Joey Chestnut and international sensation Takeru Kobayashi. Find out how you can compete at crystalsquareoff.com. September 28th, only on Fox Sports South. Just moments away from the opening kickoff here at Sanford Stadium in Athens. My pleasure to welcome in the rest of our broadcast crew today. Two outstanding sideline reporters, James Verrett, and we send it down to Jen Hildreth. Well, Bob, the word you always hear at Georgia is finish. But that's exactly what the Bulldogs did not do in their win over Georgia Southern last week. Coach Mark Rick said he felt his team lost their mental edge and they were affected by the heat. So this week he's had his guys practicing on field turf. He said it's a good 10 degrees hotter than grass to help make sure that they do finish this game today. Now let's go over to the Central Michigan sideline and James Verrett. Well, Jen, while the Bulldogs plan to finish strong, Central Michigan plans to hold the rope and unify their team for an upset between the hedges. Talking to head coach Butch Jones, he says hold the rope means this. When you're in peril in the gridiron, you need your teammate to hold the rope and pull you out. And if they can do that, they may pull off a big one here at Georgia. Let's throw it back up to Bob. Central Michigan has won the toss, and they have elected to defer. So the Bulldogs will have it. And you're looking at Remarcus Brown, number 11, the deep man for Georgia. Andrew Aguila is the kickoff man for Central Michigan. We are ready for football between the hedges. <laughs> and listen to this crowd. And it's a squibber that Brown will take. And Remarcus returns it over the 35 to the 37. Let's make the lineups today. The Dogs have shuffled the offensive line. Sophomore Clint Bowling returns to the lineup at right tackle today. True freshman Cordy Glenn starts right next to Cliff at right guard. The ends and backs, talented and deep. Split end Chris Durham was impressive last weekend against Georgia Southern. Matthew Stafford, first and 10 from the 37. Marino up to the 37. The Chips defense will be tested. That is for certain. This unit allowed nearly 37 points a game last year and yielded 70 at Clemson. They've got a couple of Georgians in the lineup today defensively. Strong side linebacker Tim Brazil is from Smyrna. And junior quarter Josh Gordy, a three-year starter, hails from Warthen, Georgia. And, Bob, I think the big key today is going to be the middle linebacker, Nick Ballour, 43. We're going to watch him all day. No shot to the 43. Marino to the 44. Frank Zombo made the tackle for Central Michigan. Marino tied his career best with three touchdowns last week. And David mentioned earlier he only carried the ball eight times in that game, but he averaged over yep. seven yeah. yards per carry. Yeah, but eight times for him, that's like a half. <laughs> Third and three. And Marino, the lone setback. Massaquad has the first down. Let's check out today's four keys to victory. Well, first of all, when Georgia has the football, don't get fancy, Bob. Do what you do best. Use your strengths. That big offensive line, pound them. Defense, use that quickness. And the second one, of course, is you got to see when Central Michigan's defense is out there, they've got to stop the dog pound. That pounding, that's a, that's a big order today. Those powerful legs into 
Central Michigan territory. Yeah, that's the thing that I think is so much better than the Herschel Walker, and that's his lateral speed. He jumps into the hole, he slides to the outside. Watch this. Nobody to the weak side. Look how far outside. That, that play is designed to go through an odd hole like the seven hole to his left, and he breaks all the way back against the grain and makes positive yardage out of it. Marino with just an incredible season a year ago, jumping into national prominence with the way he finished and the way the Bulldogs finished. No shot again. This time the CMU defense is there, led by defensive tackle Sean Murnane. Well, that was good penetration by 54. Murnane got in the backfield. If you're going to stop this Georgia offense, you've got to get in the backfield. They know they're out, man. They know they're going to get pounded, but they've got to make keys. They've got to get into the backfield, cause disruption. Marino is out. Caleb King now the tailback for the dogs in the eye. Oh, he saw the defense jump down in. Look at there. Stafford makes an audible up on the line. He saw the defense. He knows what it is. the freshman green and AJ has the Georgia first down at the 32 boy this is quite a package 6 4 190 pound freshman AJ green well you marveled at him last week and you can marvel at him again watch he doesn't play like a just a young uh, freshman great concentration look the football in catch the ball first get a foot down look at that little stutter step to make sure he has a foot down he doesn't play like a freshman rid of it and the Bulldogs are able to save that possession that got a yeah. little dicey well I think Marine I think that uh, Stafford dropped the football first and what a heads up play to not lose five to eight yards he just looked down calmly found the football watch there see on the exchange he didn't have his hands far enough in he dropped it he doesn't panic those big offensive linemen are given a little bit of time he picks it up throws it out of bounds but instead of losing seven yards they're at second and ten Mark Rick, the head coach of the dogs in his Georgia career unbeaten against non-conference opponents here 21 and 0. Chappas gets set the toss to Caleb King. Just shy of the 25 Zombo another tackle Caleb King was the dog's leading ball carrier last week against Georgia Southern had 12 carries at 95 yards. That was his first action in nearly yeah. two years. Oh, I'll tell you one thing. Caleb King number four. Everybody looks at him and just marbles. Marino back in the ball game. On third and four from the Central Michigan 26. Now, if you're Central Michigan, do you bring pressure? Third and four, it's almost sure a passing down. The give is to oh. Marino. First down and then some. First and goal, Georgia. And that cutback yeah. ability, oh. he is special. Well, I told you I like his lateral speed. This is almost assuredly a pass down for most offenses. But look at the block right there. Great block there by Tripp, number 75. That's what sprung it. Sealed on the outside. See, is he the big guy right in there? He's got him just locked. Those offensive linemen are swallowing those defensive linemen. And Moreno makes them pay for it. A 19-yard run. Green, the motion man. Stafford to his fullback, Chappas. And out of bounds inside the five. They'll mark him out of bounds at about the three and a half. Baron Miles came over to make the tackle. Well, you know, Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator, told, him, told us that he really liked the way that Matthew Stafford managed the game. There's a good example of it. Your fullback's not your primary receiver. He came off, found him out in the flat, took advantage of it. That's managing the game. 
There is Chris Boba. I mean, Mike Boba, excuse me, right in there. Touchdown. Massaquan, Georgia. On the board. Did you see what Massaqua did on that play? He was covered. It was going to be an out pattern. He gave this quarterback time. He found that open seam. Wide receivers are always told, watch this, it's out. He's covered right there. He's done, right? Look at him slip, find an open seam. Bang, Stafford just delivers it right to him. The senior from Charlotte with the touchdown. The point after is good by Blair Walsh. And second rank Georgia takes the opening kickoff and drives it right down the field to lead it 7 0. opening of new avenues. Hi, I'm Mike Moore, and I want to welcome you to our newest location, where you'll find high-quality merchandise like furniture, appliances, electronics, and computers at prices you'll love. At New Avenues, we offer flexible lease purchase options on brand new merchandise, and there's no credit check. Which means you're already approved. So come on down and join in the celebration to see what we have for you. New Avenues. New Avenues. I believe sweat feeds the soul. I believe in mental and physical toughness. I believe in success on and off the field. I believe in outworking the competition. And I believe in Ford trucks. 31 straight years at the top of its game. Georgia Saturdays built Ford tough. every four minutes. See how at GALottery.com. The Bulldogs strike first, lead 7-0 over Central Michigan. Our Holiday Inn Express scoring drive. The Dogs take the opening kick. 83 yards in 11 plays. A touchdown pass from Stafford to Massaqua. Three yards for the touchdown. Marino carried it five times in the drive for 32 yards. And Massaqua caught two balls in that drive the last for the six so Georgia did Dave just what they wanted to absolutely. do absolutely I, I that's exactly what I would do if I was sitting down there I'd say I'm going to come out I'm going to take advantage of the big guys up front drive the football keep it basic keep it simple and score first now the Chippewas on the return and this is Antonio Brown Bringing it over the 30 to the 32. The Central Michigan offensive starters, the Chips play a spread offense. Senior Andrew Hardline makes his 41st straight start today at left tackle, and a lot of pressure on that line to protect Lefevre. At running back, Ontario Sneed gets the start after a big opening game against Eastern Illinois. Number 27, Brown, who just returned the kick, is Lefevre's favorite target. Three receivers to the right as Lefevre operates on first down and a quick toss to Brown and he is met immediately by Asher Allen. Mr. Confidence, you talk about setting the tone on defense. Asher Allen just comes up from a corner spot. It's a quick slip screen out here and look at Allen react on that football. He just plants and comes up and he's got the confidence of the world. I mean, he is an excellent corner. That play lost three. Brown again. And 
turns this into positive yardage over the 40 to the 42. Let's meet the Georgia defensive starters. Up front, Corey Irvin steps into Jeff Owens' spot at tackle, and he's honoring his injured teammate today by wearing Owens' number 95. Danell Ellerby anchors the linebacking core in the middle. The secondary fast and physical as we've seen. Asher Allen ready for that challenge of the CMU passing attack, and we saw that in the first play. It's third down, and a long yard for Lefevre and the Chips. And Brown makes another catch in front of the Georgia bench for the first down at the 46. Boy, I'm going to tell you something. Lefevre has impressed me already. I like the way he reads. He's a big, tall quarterback at six foot three. He looks downfield. He's fearless. They've got to get pressure on him, but you just don't want to give up that coverage. They're going to have a fight all day long. I'm going to tell you, Lefevre is going to make a difference in this football game if he keeps on playing. There's a free down for him. He drew him off sides. And he is going to go for broke on the pass, and it's too long. He intended for Pobla, but as you mentioned, Dave, he had one on the house. <laughs> he absolutely did. He came out, and they don't do, they do a no huddle offense. So they come out, they line up on the ball, and he came up and gave him a hard count where he came up and went set. And they snapped off sides. They jumped off sides, free five yards. Offsides, number 95 on the defense. Five yard penalty, repeat first down. Our referee today, Steve Shaw, one of the best in oh, college absolutely. football. I'll tell you, this no huddle offense really keeps the defense. It kind of keeps you kind of like on the edge. There's no time to get ready and prepare. You got to get right down on the ball. And this one overthrown. Intended for Blackburn. Let's take a look at our Ford keys to victory for the Chips. Well, for the Chips, first of all, if Dan Lefevre can. Everything. I've never seen a game where one player has had so much to do with the victory, possible victory for Central Michigan, but that's Dan Lefevre. And don't get spread too thin. That's the Georgia defense. This is a spread offense. Four wide receivers, no backs. They look to the sideline. It's no huddle. They can't get spread out. They got to play basic football on defense. Butch Jones, the second year head man of the Chips. Sneed, the ball carrier into Georgia territory at the 46 before Ellerby made the stop. You know, as I watch the running play on this on this spread offense, it's really interesting. You'll see Lefevre take the ball and he fakes it. He puts it into the fullback's belly. He reads the backside. If the backer comes down, he gives it to him. If he doesn't come down, he pulls it out and throws it. It's a read every time, and the fullback has no idea whether he's going to get the football or not. Now, this is a formation. Yeah. The Fever is way out here. He's wide to the right. And a whistle blows. Central Michigan took a timeout. You take your quarterback and put him all the way over there and then call timeout. <laughs> a timeout at Sanford Stadium was 6.45 remaining in the opening quarter. Georgia, 7 nothing, but the chips are driving. From the grandstands to the infield, it's where over 100,000 fans start cheering on Friday and don't stop until Monday. To the historic Super Speedway, where victory and survival in the chase for the Sprint Cup hinges on every turn. If you plan to go to one race weekend this year, this is it. This is more than a race. This is Talladega. To guarantee your seats to the Amp Energy 500, the Mountain Dew 250, and the Arca Remax 250, go to talladegasuperspeedway.com or call 877-GO-TO-DEGA. You know, scientific tests have proven that when you drink Dr. Pepper slowly, the 23 flavors taste even better. Hey, I get it, because half my life's been in slow motion. Watch this. Slower is better. Are you kidding me? Trust me, I'm a doctor. Phone. 
Mary doesn't have AT&T, which means we've got no bars here in this podunk little town we just moved to. So thanks for the call about how Michael Phelps is right down the street, signing autographs, taking pictures, telling hilarious stories about how much he loves Chinese food. Yeah, we're not gonna get that message. One day we'll look back at this and laugh. Or cry! For the best coverage, switch to AT&T. More bars you in more places. Dummy! In athletic competition and in the classroom, the SEC prepares its student athletes for life. I started swimming at the age of five in order to keep up with my older brother. But the lessons learned as an all-American swimmer for Auburn honed my true competitive spirit. As one of 12 nominees representing each SEC school, I am honored to be the 2008 McWhorter Female Scholar Athlete of the Year. Upon graduation, I will work toward my dream of becoming a doctor, filled with the memories of life in the SEC. The SEC, our future is now. Today's game is being brought to you by McDonald's, Toyo Tires and Rubber, and by Honda Power. Back to the action here at Sanford Stadium, 7-0 Dogs, Central Michigan. Driving the football, third and two in Georgia territory. Sneed did not get it. Stacked up at the 45. I can I'll can. i tell you right now, I'll bet you Dan Lefevre said I should have kept this football. He gives it to the fullback, puts it in there, and there's no seam up front. Look at those big hosses sliding around that front line. They just control it. Had he pulled that football back out, he was clear around the backside corner. Now, fourth down territory. You got to go for it, maybe. See if they don't try a hard count. He's, he's looking to go for it. Play clock under 10. He's got time. Here he goes. Oh, that and little pooch. And this will roll inside the 10. And down to the nine by the Chippewa. Boy, did you see Georgia? They're fighting between whether they should come up and play defense because it's in that, that fourth down and one or two situation. That's a heck of a call. Now the dogs get it back, and we did not see a great deal of defensive resistance from the <laughs> Chippewas in that first drive. Yeah, I can promise you they're over on the sideline, and their, their defensive coach is having a little talk with them right now because, well, this last series. And that's Tim Banks, the defensive coordinator, because you're right, they never slowed him down. The dogs took the opening drive, 83 yards to score. And now they've got to negotiate 92. Stafford the pump fake. And too long for Massaqua. Here's that first drive that was so successful for Georgia. Well, it was a well-balanced, just meticulous drive. Good throw out to Massaqua to start it. Then Moreno takes the football, finds that backside lateral slide and picked up 19 yards. And then all of a sudden, was good the time that Stafford had as he came out and found Massaqua. Massaqua did a good job getting open, finding the seam. Well-designed drive. Stafford now on second and ten. This is a big down second and ten. You don't want to come up third and ten because you know they're going to come after you. And it's no shot bottled up for the first time today and inside the five back at the four. Boy they got a great push did Central Michigan on the right side. They came up over here. You're going to see a good push right here. Get outside. Get containment. Watch this slide. Don't get cut down. Look at that good slide. Pay across the face. Turn it back inside. That was an excellent series. Now you've got third down and about a half a mile. And now you got to come with pressure. Now you're putting your corners and your safeties in one on one. This is where it can this is where it can hurt if you don't get to them. Massaqua, Durham and Green are the wide receivers as Stafford works out of the gun from his own end zone. It's Marino. Two cuts to get open. And wrestled down. First down, Georgia at the 26. And Bob, there was an outstanding block on the outside. This is just like a little slip screen. Look at the lineman. See him bailing out here? Look at that block right to the left right there. 
That was Vince Vance, the big guard, number 72. And that's what sprung it open. You find somebody like Moreno, you give him space, and he's going to take advantage of it. But that's the big guy. He gets a real plus on that play. And no shot did the rest. I mean, Vince Vance, 72. He's six foot eight, 320 pounds. He ain't Central supposed Michigan. to run like that. That's their second time out of the half. Central Michigan is going to stop the clock here with 430 left in the first quarter. And we'll step aside. Seven nothing dogs over Central Michigan. Pierre. Ah, super for your victory. Celebration. Woo! Number 29! Come take a bubble bath, baby! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, you're not really a champagne guy, are you? Oh, heck no. Nobody did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Mm. Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. They say good things come to those who wait. What do they know? Why wait when you can get the Yamaha ATV or Yamaha Rhino of your choice right now? The Yamaha Why Wait sales event. Now get payments as low. CMC Recycling is paying top dollar for scrap metal, steel, aluminum, copper, and brass. Bring your scrap metal to CMC and walk away with cash in your pocket. We accept any amount of scrap, large or small. CMC is the oldest scrapyard in Augusta, and we're proud to have a reputation built on integrity and safety. Trade your scrap metal for cold cash at CMC Recycling on Old Savannah Road. It doesn't cost anything to go to college. A house costs probably like $10 or something. My baby brother costs 70 cents, or about like 75 cents. Call Queensborough National Bank and Trust. Georgia converted a third and 15 just moments ago. Now first and 10 for the dogs. At the 26, 7 0 leaders over the Chippewas, representing the Mid American Conference. 92,700 plus at Sanford Stadium on a steamy Saturday afternoon. 88 degrees currently. Caleb King. Caleb King, come on, here we go. To the 29. Sean Murnane made the tackle for CMU. Well, I'm just zeroing in on these offensive linemen. I want to tell you, I watched Vince Vance again there, 72. You talk about sliding. It's hard to believe that you can be nimble at 320. He's nimble. I mean, you ever hear somebody nimble at 320? Well, you're nimble. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm not 320. <laughs> Well, you got to love this big offensive line, and Stafford does. They slide, they move well, they zone block, they give them time, they open holes. King. First down, Georgia. Up to the 41. Now, Bob, one of the things that Central Michigan has got to do is they have got to get shirts to the football. You look at the shirts, the number of shirts. You can't get cut down like that. You can't slide along because this team is too good. You've got to get to the football. You've got to square up and get in there. I can promise you this defense is going to get an ear chewing if they don't slide to the football. An 11-yard gain for Caleb. Marino back in. King now three carries for 20 yards. No shot on the lone setback. On first down, Marino. 
those tough yards inside to the 45, maybe the 46, as we go down to the field and James Verrett. Well, Bob and Dave, when you look at Butch Jones, it seems like the honeymoon in the South has quickly turned dull and sour for him. He has been all over his assistant coaches, especially his defensive line coaches and his defensive line, looking for the push. You look at Georgia's run plays, they haven't been very complex, very simple run plays, and he's looking for the defense to be more physical and to get the push. Marino's up to 32 yards on seven carries. Gosh, that's just one less than he had last week. <laughs> Marino, a pass catcher this time, but could not spin out of the grasp of the corner man for Central Michigan, Josh Gordy. Boy, and Gordy did a nice job for Central Michigan. He came up, he broke he broke through his block and got Moreno before he was able to get at, at a head of steam. He had cut back underneath, he had gotten that block, but good play there by Josh Gordy. Third and three. Here comes pressure. Oh, and it, Stafford saw it. He saw the pressure. You see him put those hands up. Now see if they change the defense. Chased out of the pocket. Stafford incomplete. Intended for Green and the Bulldog Nation roaring that that should have been pass interference. I think that was Gordy again who got that arm in there and it was really tight coverage. Look at Stafford get outside the rush. They put up an all out blitz on him and he gets outside. Now watch number 19 is Gordy on Central. Look at that arm come in there. Boy that was really close. The fans look up there and see it <laughs> on the screen and they're going "Ooh, wait a minute. They're looking at the same replay that we're <laughs> we looking are. at and uh, <laughs> they voice their displeasure. Excellent punter Brian Mims number two in the SEC last year at over 42 yards per punt. Oh, Mims just pooch punts it. Oh, but it gets and a great gets a terrific roll wow. inside the 10. That gets a wow. I want to tell you, I thought I thought to myself when I saw Mims punt it, I thought, oh, he just pooched it. But what a great roll right down the sideline. Anytime you get him inside the 20, you get a pat on the head. That's what a, uh, a punter does. A 45-yard punt from Mims. 40-year-old Butch Jones, the head man of the Chippewas. He was one of three first-year coaches to take his club to a bowl game last year. Troy Calhoun did it at Air Force, and Jeff Jagodinsky did it at Boston College was at Central left came back and was part of that West Virginia club that beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl that was played in Atlanta after Katrina. Boy I'm really surprised that Lefevre has not kept the football. I'm used to him. I watched the film from last week. He fakes that handoff and pulls it out and runs that option out to the outside by himself and he's had a lot of success. What it tells me is that Willie Martinez, who is the defensive coordinator, has got a defense sitting there with an outside backer. And he's just checking Lefevre to make sure that he hands the ball off. Not much operating room for Ontario Sneed. And that's a red wall up front, Bob. That's just a wall of blockers. These defensive linemen are so good. They play with their hands. They slide to the football. They do not get cut down. And they just move and use the offensive player just to, almost like a shield in front of them. Central Michigan, one of two on third downs. It's third and seven. Fever dumps it to Snead. And a good close to deny the first down at the 18 yard line. Prince Miller, the nickelback, coming over to make the tackle. Boy, and there's really an important category there, and it's called yards after catch. Prince Miller did not give him a yard. And that is the end of the first quarter here at Sanford Stadium. Second ranked Georgia took the opening kickoff and drove it in for a score. And we've played on even terms since then. End of one in Athens, Georgia seven, Central Michigan nothing. Wow, this is great.
the deal was you were supposed to make me breakfast this morning. It's what you cook, if you cook. Funny. McDonald's McSkillet Burrito. Skillet potatoes, scrambled eggs, cheese, sausage, and sefty salsa, all wrapped up to go. That's the best breakfast you've ever made. <laughs> Nissan set out to create the perfect on-road vehicle, and in the process, created a category. Introducing two crossover leaders from Nissan, the redesigned Murano, awarded as an IIHS top safety pick, and the versatile Rogue, named 2008's best new small crossover. Lease the 27 MPG Nissan Rogue, just $229 a month. Don't follow the leader, own one at your Nissan dealer now. Thanks to the industry's first electric power steering system, the Grizzly 700 stands alone as the world's number one big bore ATV. A hard act to follow. Until now, the brand new Grizzly 550 with power steering. So you can pound it all day without feeling it the next day. The new Grizzly 550 with electric power steering from Yamaha. Now get a $400 warm winch for just $69.95 plus special low financing. When you're thinking Braves, think Wednesday Night Braves on FSN South. It's the one night when your Braves are in one place. Wednesday Night Braves on FSN South. Braves, Rockies. Coverage begins at 6.30 with Dodge Braves Live. Baseball's golden age. See legendary heroes in a rare collection of footage that brings America's pastime to life like never before. It's an all-new episode. The greatest pitchers of the era. Sunday. Downtown Athens, Georgia on a Saturday for college football. The dogs are at Sanford Stadium. We get set to go to quarter number two, a 7-0 UGA lead. Fourth down, and Central Michigan will be punting as we come back. Brett Hartman is the punter for CMU. And, Bob, you will never see a wider spread punt cover. Look at that punt cover. I mean, was, oh! And the bobble. He did get it away and out of bounds. They were spread all the way across the field and it almost got blocked. John Knox came oh so close. Absolutely over here. Watch the bobble. See the bobble? That gives you time if you're a defender. Look, he bobbles it. Look how close that ball. It looked like he almost blocked it, kicked it underneath his hands. See if he doesn't kick it under. Yes, he does. He kicked it underneath his hands. But I don't know if I've ever seen a spread like that. I've seen a spread offense, but never saw a spread punt. <laughs> Brett Hartman saying, wow, that was close. Here's Marino. Inside the 20 to the Chippewa 18. Did you see how he never breaks gate? He makes a lateral move on the run at full speed. That's something that Herschel Walker did not do. Watch right, watch right there. Look at that hole in the middle. Now look at this, no break in his speed, just cut back inside. He's got great fast feet. They're down quickly. I told you he was gonna come back with a vengeance and he is today. I know you love running backs that oh. come through that hole with their head up. Oh yeah, that's the whole secret when you get that football is to have that head up. Don't look down because that quarterback's gonna place it in there. Keep your head up, look for the hole. No Sean waits. Finds a little green space and gets down to the 14. And there wasn't any hole that time. Did you see how he kind of just, he, he has a great tendency to wait for his blockers. He doesn't run to the hole immediately hoping there's a block. He sets up his blockers and just uses them. And the amazing thing, he's just a sophomore. He is amazing, I want to tell you. Marino is from New Jersey. Oh, and absolutely. now everybody here wears his jersey. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> It's too bad he can't get in on that action. <laughs> Here comes a blitz. You see Stafford see it again. He points right at him. He says, there's a blitz. The play action over the middle deflected and incomplete. Intended for Green. Boy, that was a quick hand in there. 
If that ball stayed up, I think it was Tim Brazil, number 17, who got that hand in there on the dive. Watch to your right of your screen. Just get that hand right in there. Now look how high that ball is. That's when you yell, fire, fire. And everybody reacts to the football and looks for it. Boy, if he could have grabbed that one, he would have saved himself. Uh, that would have been a good one for the sideline. That's when you want to be seen by the coach. Stafford now 6 of 10 for 49 yards and the one touchdown. Big Dogs third down. Four of six on third down. Yeah, big third down here. Don't want to give it up. Stafford. Complete the Massaqua to the six, and that will give the Dogs first and goal. And Bob, you know what that shows me? That shows me Stafford's vision. He's looking downfield. The play is designed over to the left side. He's looking that way. He's got a little bit of time, and he comes off here. Now, Masqua is not the primary receiver. He comes back to the football, exactly what you want a receiver to do. When your quarterback's in trouble, come back to the football. Excellent job. Now they're checking uh, Noshawn Marino. He cramped up last week in that Georgia Southern game. Yeah. He started tapping his hamstring, and everybody was holding their breath here. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you, I love the banter between him and uh, Matthew Stafford about, hey, you cramped up last week. That's why you only got eight carries. Substitution violation. 12. Five yard penalty. It remains first down. Let's take a look at what happened on Moreno blocking on that last play. Yeah, a lot of times a running back, you think they just have to carry the football? Watch number 24. There he is over on the left side. Great block. When you drop him down on the ground and then you allow your quarterback to come outside, that was an excellent block. You don't block to him, you block through him. Now, he may have gotten dinged because he went down low and just kind of took the fellow's legs out, whoever he was blocking, the outside backer. So he may have gotten a shot, you know, a bump to the head or something like that. Because I don't think he's gassed. He's too good to be gassed. 12.52 in the second. We had a five-yard penalty on the dogs for an illegal substitution. Tavares King was the guilty party. So the football back at the 11. Now, I think that was a post foul where it was after the play, so it's still first down. Should be first down on the 11. Am first I right? Yes, sir. Yes. First and goal okay. from the 11. Post possession foul. Caleb King is the lone setback. Stafford counters Massaqua. Trying to stretch out for that goal line. Takes it to the three. Did you see Clint Bowling that time, number 60? He came out on a slip screen, number 60. And I mean, you talk about, I lost sight of the cornerback that was coming up the force. Number 60, I think he's right about there. Now watch him slide outside. He slides out, oh, there he is right there. Boom, there he is, golly. Number 60 swallows the corner. Just a little Southern yeah. hospitality yeah. for the boys from Mount Pleasant, Michigan. I should be a corner, see him coming at you, full speed. King. Caleb King to the one. And they'll mark him at the one. No, I didn't see when King went down that time. It looked like he almost rolled on top of the pile and got his feet back down. And, you know, you, you have a player like Noshan Moreno, and you think, golly, you know, if he gets hurt, if he gets dinged. I want to tell you, Caleb King steps right in. They don't miss a beat. And they also have Richard Samuel. Oh, yes. It's just an embarrassment of riches <laughs> at the tailback spot. <laughs> Two freshmen and a sophomore. Another third down for Georgia. Dogs five of six on third down conversions. This one, third and goal at the one. And another flag. I wonder if this is that substitution one where you break the huddle with 12 guys. That's what it is. If you can't break the huddle with 12 men. You've got to get them in and out of field. And you see right there, coach going over and just turned around saying, hey, we're not going to have that. We're not going to hurt ourselves. That's Butch Jones, the head coach of uh, Central Michigan. This is my part. Big man on big man. Smash mouth. Man, how about King Central Michigan? did not Michigan? get in. 
How about Central Michigan? The chips hold on third down. It will be fourth and goal. Now this is my favorite time of the game. You come out here. Oh, they gave him a touchdown. When they unpiled him, he was all the way underneath. <laughs> the dogs have their second score. I love that. We're not doing anything fancy. Georgia says we're going to come up. We're going to plow you off the football. Watch that line surge. Man, they just come forward. Scoot underneath and just keep those feet going. Break that plane. There are about 20 guys in that pile. So it took a while, but Caleb King gets his first career touchdown. 11-10, second quarter. Dogs have their second score and lead 14-0. One man, eight minutes, 60 Crystal Burgers. Paul Hunt just earned his place at the finals of Crystal Square Off 5, the World Hamburger Eating Championship. The biggest names in Major League Eating are battling it out right now for a spot at the Crystal Square Off 5 final table. And I'll see you at the championship. Where they'll face defending champion Joey Chestnut and international sensation Takeru Kobayashi. Find out how you can compete at crystalsquareoff.com. September 28th, only on Fox Sports South. horsepower specially designed to help maximize the power in your car unleash all your horses Introducing the bigger, tastier chicken strips with our new Chick-fil-A sauce. As fans of the SEC, we share the bond of pride. It's where generations of faithful have undying devotion to their teams. Carrying flags, bearing colors, and wearing passion on our sleeves. I'm happy to be part of this SEC family. I'm proud to pass on our rich tradition. Let's keep and preserve what is special. Sportsmanship, we all have a part to play. A big moment for redshirt freshman Caleb King from Norcross, Georgia, his first career touchdown. And it caps a seven play 47 yard drive that consumed three minutes and 44 seconds. A 14 nothing Georgia lead. You see no Sean Moreno and we're checking on his status. We talked about uh, this a moment ago, Dave, when yeah. he got dinged on that block. Well, there he is on the left of your screen, and he's going to come out there, and he's going to just throw throw a low block. And what happens is I'm wondering whether he just got dinged, and we don't see it in that picture, but I wonder if he just got dinged, got one of those knees in the forehead. See how he lays there? He doesn't lay there at the blocks. He pops up. So I'm wondering if he got dinged. I don't think he's gassed, but... Uh, I know there's a lot of people wondering also, mm -hmm. but it's good to see him up moving around. That's a good sign. Chippewa sent two man deep to receive the Blair Walsh kick. Antonio Brown, 27, and Hannibal Buford, 26. the six and the return over the 30 to the 31 it's another scorcher here in Athens just like last week's opener against Georgia Southern the temperature in the low 90s and it's been a concern for the dogs and head coach Mark Rick for more on that we send it down to the sidelines and Jen well, Bob, Mark Rick talked about his team needing to be more prepared for the heat. You know, something that they do, I talked to the director of sports medicine, Ron Corson. Every week before their games, the players get a flyer like this put in their locker. Has sports nutrition. Talks about everything, what they should eat, how they should eat leading up to game day. But look at this down here. 
add salt? Thought that was a little strange, but Corson told me that sodium deficiency is a main cause of cramps, Bob. Carl Volney with the carry. It had been a rather mild training camp, even by hot yeah. Georgia summer standards for the dogs. And then last Saturday's game, it's like they turned up the thermometer at about <laughs> 10 degrees. And, and Mark Rick was very concerned that his club wasn't conditioned well enough for that heat and humidity. So he put him through the paces again this week. Yeah, and practice, as Jim told us, on the turf to get more heat. Right. He said it's 10, 15 degrees hotter. And it's muggy right now. Here's Lefevre throwing this one away. It will be third down. And now what I see right now is I see Georgia starting to disrupt Lefevre's time. The two corners are creeping up. They're saying, hey, they're running short patterns. They're creeping up, and they're in one-on-one. -on -one. Lefevre has got to find somebody else for a receiver. He's got to open up this offense. He's right out of a little bit of out of sync. See if he can't find a receiver for that 12, 15 yard gain to get him back on target. Pressure. And Volney's going nowhere. Curran jumped on his back. Did you see the speed that Rennie Curran, number 35, did? We call that closing speed. He ran right around the block. Number 35 on the right of your screen. He is going to, he's going to just run to the football. Little switch inside there. Now look, right there, he ran underneath the block and made the tackle. A five-yard loss on the play. Asher Allen and Rashad Jones, the deep man. Here's Brett Hartman getting ready to punt it away for CMU. 14-0 Georgia. Much better punt. Who's going to take it? It's going to be Jones. Penalty flag. A return to the 43. That's usually the block in the back. That first man down, you're trying to get that angle, trying to get that head in front, and you do a block in the back. That's my guess. <laughs> During the return, holding number 20 on the receiving team. That penalty will be 10 yards from the end of the return, first and 10. And with that, a timeout here at Sanford Stadium. 926, second quarter. Our dog day Saturday with Georgia up 14. I get out and I ride with my buddies every weekend, you know. We go out and get after it. Like today we hit one section when everyone stopped, second guessed it, and I just kept going. Rock here, rock there. I just got a handful and there she went. True all-wheel drive, new active descent control, legendary ride and handling. Polaris, the world's toughest ATVs. Polaris Power Play sales event. Get to your participating dealer for up to eight hundred dollars in rebates and as low as three point nine nine percent APR on select ATVs. To understand the true nature of speed, to truly appreciate the intensity of steel, merging with strategy at one hundred and ninety miles an hour, to feel the adrenaline as five hundred miles comes down to two cars side by side with one lap to go. The best place to be is right in the middle of it. Atlanta Motors. Being a younger fella, I didn't really expect them to treat me the same as they would an older person. But the service was awesome. It sparkles, it shines, and I love it. I thought the pricing was less than the other jewelers in the area. I was amazed at the selection. They had a lot of diamonds to choose from, and the quality was amazing. It was like the little green box said it all. And I think it was how wonderful they were and how knowledgeable, professional. And my favorite word, exquisite. It doesn't cost anything to go to college. A house costs probably like ten dollars or something. Any new room for my baby brother costs seventy cents or about like seventy-five cents. Call Queensboro National Bank and Trust.
Today's game is being brought to you by Louisiana Pacific, McDonald's, and by Ford. Bob Rathman, Dave Rowe, back here in the booth with you at Sanford Stadium, our Honda game summary to date. Matthew Stafford's 8 for 12 and throwing the football, one early touchdown. No shot, Marino, eight rushes and 65 yards. And no shot is back in the ball game after he was shaken up on the previous possession. First and 10 for the Dogs at their own 33. And uh, another fumble, but this one blown dead. Well, that was a weird play. Well, Massaqua jumped. <laughs> They ought, to be, they ought to be lucky he did. Number one on the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. If Masqua doesn't jump that time, they lose the football. Georgia would have lost the football because it was a quick snap. Quarterback wasn't ready for it. And those are not standalone plays. You saw the expression on Mark Rick. He's got <laughs> yeah. a hand on his hip. He's not happy. <laughs> SEC play oh, yeah. starts next Saturday. Sean. Nowhere to go this time. The Georgia schedule, Dave, is just oh. unprecedented with its uh, toughness factor. Not only do you have the host of SEC East teams that you have to go through every year, but just look at where these games yeah. are. You know, in two weeks, they have to go to Tempe, Arizona. I heard today the game time temperature today for the Stanford game in Tempe is 107. Oh, man. Then you've got, after South Carolina in conference, Alabama, and then those road dates, Florida, Jacksonville, et cetera. If they can get through this schedule, they shouldn't have to play a national championship <laughs> That's exactly game. Right. Just give them the crown. Stafford over the middle, and off the hand of Chris Durham. Boy, and that was a perfect pass to Durham. Little cut pattern just like he made last week. A little post pattern over the middle. Number 16 is Durham. There he is coming across. Look how wide open he is. And then the defender comes in there and almost intercepts it on the tip. You don't want to tip it up in the air. See how quickly the safety comes back up? That's Bobby Say. This is a, this is a big down right here. If you're Georgia, you don't want to give the football back up. You know you've throttled your opponent, but you don't want to give the football back up here. But when they have been good on third downs. Linebacker Nick Malore. Peering in as Stafford throws, and Massaqua had his head turned incomplete. And it will be a punt for the ball for the Bulldogs. Well, you can see the disgust on Stafford when he came to the sideline. He flipped that helmet back up. That's a quarterback's sign of disgust. Mark Richt, he's the duck. He's paddling like crazy underneath, but let me tell you, on the surface, he looks calm. Antonio Brown waiting. Brian Mims, number 32, with his back to you, ready to kick it away. Booms this one. The catch made at the 33. Working the Central Michigan sideline is James Verrett. Well, Bob and Dave, Dan Lefevre, you would think that he's a little bit rattled after not being able to score the first couple of times out, but he is a guy that's cool and calm under pressure. Talking to one of his offensive linemen this week, he said the first time he went in, he was like deer in headlights and actually t almost turned the ball over on his first snap from scrimmage in a real game. But now he's the kind of guy that encourages the rest of the offensive players, and that's what he's been doing on the sideline right up until he ran out on the field. Yeah, he's the kind of quarterback that can take charge, and he needs to do it right now. I think he needs to run the football himself. Step up there and take off. And a diving attempt by Antonio Brown incomplete. Now, there's a good example. He stepped up into his guard uh, tackle seam. He had five to six yards at least to run. It's almost like he doesn't want to run. Again, watch him step up nice in the hole. There's nobody in front of him, and he can outrun him, but he throws a, an incomplete. Pick up that five to seven yards.
We're talking about a quarterback that ran for a thousand yards. And Brown drops it at the 35. That's such a big component of Lefevre's yeah. attack that Absolutely. has been missing from Absolutely. this game. Absolutely. He, I don't think he's got a carry yet. I don't think he has run the football yet. And that's a part of the game that he gives you. He gives you that run threat, so it's not 10, 11 against 10. It's 11 against 11, and he's quite a factor. Dave, the last two defensive series, Georgia has finally figured yep. this all out. Oh, yeah. Georgia's coming with four down linemen. They're putting a lot of pressure on them. They're pushing the pocket back. The corners are creeping up. You see how they're creeping up? Look right there. You see that corner play? That's creeping up when you're up that close on their face. And a great defensive play that time for the dogs. And on the corner, Asher Allen just had him all wrapped up. No chance to complete that pass. Well, all right. Now, Asher Allen knows he's going to get a good push by his defensive line. And look at number two. He's only playing four yards off. And look at him get in there. That may have been a little bit early contact. But Asher Allen, they're willing to take choice uh, chances because they know that Lefevre's not, first of all, he's not going to run. Second of all, he's not going to have time to drop back. So the corners are creeping up. Safeties are sliding over. They got, Lefevre has got to change the tempo. Asher Allen, the single safety for the Hartman's punts. Line drive. And Allen makes a great catch. Allen to the outside to the 45 yard line of Central Michigan and the punter Hartman made the tackle a timeout at Sanford Stadium 750 second quarter second ranked Georgia leading Central Michigan 14 nothing and the dogs will have it when we come back. First there was the chili cheese steak burger. Then came the chili cheese fries. And now, Hardee's introduces the jumbo chili dog. The new jumbo chili dog, two for only $3 at Hardee's. If it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't belong in your face. I believe sweat feeds the soul. I believe in mental and physical toughness. I believe in success on and off the field. I believe in outworking the competition. And I believe in Ford trucks. 31 straight years at the top of its game. Georgia Saturdays built Ford tough. Hi, I'm Mike Moore. And I'm Michael Moore. We want to welcome you to New Avenues. Still your best source for unbeatable prices on the name brand merchandise you deserve. Be cool for back to school. At least this compact laptop computer or this compact desktop with a 22-inch monitor for just $99 a month. In New Avenues, we offer flexible lease purchase options with no credit check, which means you're already approved. So come see us today, because in New Avenues, it's all within reach. New Avenues. New Avenues. Sunday nights are television's biggest night with the Sunday Sports Block. It all starts with Best Dam's Top 50, followed by Baseball's Golden Age. Then it's amazing sports stories. And finally, it's a classic IFL light heavyweight championship showdown between Vladimir Matushenko and Jamal Patterson. Four great shows in a row. The Sunday Sports Block, every Sunday night beginning at 7. Favor talking to the coaches up in the press box. 14 0 Georgia after a 37 yard punt, a 25 yard return. And the dogs are getting it done, averaging over five yards per play in Central Michigan at 1.6. Yeah. yeah, their wide receivers are dropping the football. They're not establishing a run, and they're not going to have success that way. I really feel the Fever's got to put that football down and, and run it. But times are now for Georgia, and they just want to capitalize. When you give them opportunities, strike. And the catch made by Michael Moore. And a first down for the Dogs at the 33-yard line. Boy, Moore does a nice job on this curl pattern. He's a big target. 
And Stafford just comes right up, sees them, gets that, takes advantage of it, move those chains. Now they come out in their no huddle offense. A 12 yard gain. Four again. And another Georgia first down inside the 20, out of bounds at the 17. Bobby Say defending pushed him out, but another big pickup from Michael Moore, the junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Now, George is coming out, no huddle. They're not allowing Central Michigan to make changes. They're coming out, setting on the line, and you'll see Stafford set him, look over to the sideline, snap the football just like he does. He's not letting any changes, and he's just picking them apart. And stretching out toward the goal was Goodman. It's going to be... A touchdown. Now, what a great play by Goodman. Well, I saw those long arms. I'm not sure that I didn't think he could reach the goal line. I don't know how that ball got across. Talk about stretching. All he's got to do is break that plane with the nose of the ball. Now watch this. Look at that stretch. That did no, ball. No, he fumbled. He, he did fumbled. fumble and picked up and recovered by Marino for the touchdown. I didn't think he had arms that long. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but what a heads up play by Marino. Now, you don't quit. You see now he just comes into the picture. A lot of backs would quit on that play. You don't have to run all the way down there. Marino's not in the play, but he's 20 yards downfield, and it results in a touchdown. You'll take it. It happened so yep. quickly. The stretch, then the bobble, then the signal. Now, you, you said he had to break the plane. You're absolutely right. He doesn't, but when he puts the football down, I think he's down right there. Now, the officials, they should review that because I believe he's down. I don't think that's a touchdown. And the review is yeah. underway. Yeah, that's a great shot by our crew. After review, the runner's knee was down before the ball came out. Therefore, the ball will be placed down at the one-yard line. It will be first and goal for Georgia. There you go. And that's what it should have been. That's exactly what it should have been. His knee was down. We can see. See his knee is down right there. There's no question. Ball is not. Ball is not over the goal line. Didn't break the plane. That's a great shot. That's why we have instant replay. And that's why we have officials that are looking at this. And they review every play of the entire game. Stafford with some power football at Marino. Second and goal inside that one yard line. Now I'll tell you, the Chippewas give away a lot of weight in this situation. Those big hosses up front for Georgia average 300 pounds, but the Chippewas are getting underneath them. They're coming off the ball, and you see number 98 there. That's Frank Zombo. He's one of those guys, they play with heart. They know that they're they're outgunned today, let me tell you, but they're playing with heart. They can stop them again, but this is the time when it's big man on big man. Oh, and they did stop him again. Marino denied at the goal line. So third and goal at the one. Bobby Say, the free safety, was the man who stood him up. Bush Jones has to be thrilled yeah. with the effort he's getting yeah. right now. Absolutely. When you get down here, this is what we used to call slobber knocker time. You know, there's nothing fancy. It's just big man on big man, blow them off. This is like hitting that seven man sled when you're dead tired and you got the big guys up front. Cordy Glenn, number, uh, number 71, 6'5, 315 pounds. Marino cuts back. He's in this time. Touchdown, Georgia. One of the things I like about Marino is that he can play smack mouth football. That's where you just come up, and I mean, you know you're going to get hit, but you try to hit him harder than he hits you. He's got all those moves and everything, but I'll tell you one thing, Marino can put his head down and get a touchdown for you. The point after is good as we send it down to Jen Hildreth. Well, you guys are talking awful lot about no 
know Sean Marino as you should, but you know what? There may be a few things you don't know about No Sean. So we tried to find a few fun facts. How about the fact that he took a 15-hour train ride from New Jersey for his first visit to Athens? His name, quite unique. Combination of his father, whose nickname was Knowledge, and his mom, Vera Sean. And he has a 43-game winning streak as a starter, not to mention a grandfather who was a magician. So I don't know. What do you think, guys? Maybe that's where he gets some of those nifty moves we see? <laughs> I got to tell you, Bob, that train trip, that must have been a classic. And you listen to Mark Rick, he's like, he just showed up. I don't know what he was expecting. He just showed up. He spent 15 hours on the train. And he told us yesterday, he said, man. And, and I heard you ask him, say, you ever take any more train rides? No, 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 sir. <laughs> I don't take any more train rides. A six-play, 45-yard drive that took 221. skill of Marino yeah, that's what I'm calling smack mouth when somebody hits you and you just keep on you're gonna fall forward so 21 nothing Georgia 529 in the second Antonio Brown 27 26 Hannibal Buford the deep men for the Chippewa and Brown is gonna bring it out He goes at the 22 yard line. Ellerby made the tackle and a little extracurricular activity. Well, Bob, I think you're going to see what Dan Lefevre is made of right now. I think that he's got to come out, he's got to get something going. And I believe that the adjustments he's got to make is he has got to run the football once in a while. But we have seen Georgia, speaking of adjustments, the first two series, Central Michigan was able yep. to get some yardage, and even though they didn't score, they were moving the football pretty well. But the last three possessions, it's been yep. the Georgia defense dictating tempo. Yeah, that's Willie Martinez, the, op the defensive coordinator. He's got a solid, they play technique football here. They don't gamble, they don't freelance. And Dan throws it up and away, incomplete. Second and 10. <laughs> Yeah, there's Willie uh, Martinez, the, uh, the defensive coordinator. I love him. He's an in-your-face coach. He is the kind of guy, he said, we did not finish last week. I didn't like that game. I don't want any part of that. That's my kind of coach right there. Willie Martinez with the connection to CMU. He was the defensive back coach in 94 and again was in Mount Pleasant in 98 to 2000, was the assistant head coach in 2000 before coming to join the Bulldogs. Lefevre throws. This one is complete. The slotting catch by Keto Poblo. Now that's the kind of play. That's the kind of play that you need pick him. That that'll pick him up. Last week in that game that they played last week, Joe Bachheim did that same thing on a little crossing pattern, and it sparked this offense. All of a sudden, Lefevre thinks he can complete some. It was a good pass. It could have been a little bit better. Could have hit him on the run. But is that the spark that Central Michigan needs? Wait a minute, did they call that incomplete? Wow. Oh. We had, they had, a, he had his back to us, and it looked like he had cradled that football in there. Third and ten. Yeah, it was awkward the way he went down. Now Lefebvre has to burn a timeout. He couldn't get his men to respond, and they were out of position, and the crowd noise was certainly a factor. <laughs> yeah, that's what Mark Rick told us. He said, I want to see SC I want them to know what SEC football <laughs> and home field advantage is all about. Let's take a look at the Pobla play a moment yeah. ago. Pobla, I thought he came down with this football. Let's see again. Good throw. It's a little bit behind him and low. He's got it there. Oh, that's a great camera shot. You see, that's why the awkwardness, he had it between his legs. Well, that's a great camera shot when you can catch that football, and it was down between his legs, and that's an absolutely perfect call. It was not a completion. Central Michigan has a rather unique way to grade their players. For more on that story, here's James. Well, it's either pass or fail, plus or minus for Butch Jones when he grades his team as far as seeing exactly what the Chippewas are doing as far as effort goes. They call it play grades, and it's broken down into three separate things. 
grades. First of all, you look at the overall grade, and it goes in a combination of loafs, not running hard to the ball, and soft, not playing physical. And so far for the defense and offensive line, they are getting negative grades when it comes to their to overall grade. Back to you guys. That's the Chippewas' oh. final time out of the half. Lefevre and another flag. Yeah, the wide receiver on this side, on this side of the football, just flinched just a little bit. Can't do that. Boy, for Butch Jones. Oh, that's going to be an interesting halftime oh, chat. Oh man, I'd like to be the fly on the, the wall. Snap, false start, number 89 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. It remains third down. If you're going to be a fly on the wall, I would suggest get <laughs> off the wall because there's going to be a new paint job <laughs> yeah. as soon as Butch is done airing out the team. Well, this is an offense. We're talking about a quarterback who had what 3,600 yards plus last year. He's not. He's not taking control of this. I know George is good. I know they've made adjustments, but a lot of it falls on Dan Lefevre. He has got to be able to make these calls, adjustments, and complete passes. And it's complete to the 25. And out of bounds. That stops the clock with five minutes to go in the half. Miller defending as Bachheim made the grab. Did you see what Bachheim did that time? It's almost like he knew where that first down marker was. He caught that ball, he turned to the outside, and the last little bit, he stretched out there, and I think he got enough yardage. Well, no, he no, came up on a yard, yard. shot. Yes, but again, watch this right here. You turn, now watch the last bit of effort right here to reach out with the football and try to get that extra yard. That's what when you know what you need. That was a good move. Don't chew him out, coach. So the chips will punt it away. Fred Hardman handles it. Asher Allen on the receiving end at the 30. Four thirty one to go in this first half and back downstairs to Jim. Well, guys, as you know, Georgia started the season preseason number one, and uh, Mark Richt had a pretty good tool, also a very entertaining tool, as you're about to see, to get his guys to understand that they need to focus on football and not on something like the Seminole Wrap, care of the 1988 Florida State team. The Seminoles of Florida State, we know we're good, some say we're great. A goal is simple, best in the land. Rockin' to the beat of the Martin Chiefs band on Saturday night. We'll spread our stuff to show the thing. <laughs> Well, I think it's pretty entertaining, but the point was, of course, here these guys were focusing on dance moves. Miami, their first opponent of the season, focusing on defense. Miami whooped the number one ranked Seminoles 31 to nothing. So I'd say that's a pretty powerful example of keeping your focus where it needs to be. That's where Mark Richt, of course, earned his spurs as yeah. one of the great play callers uh, in college football and, of course, took over the head job here in Athens. But he was preaching all through the summer as yeah. the number one rankings were coming out and no Sean Marino and Matt Stafford on every magazine cover of the preseason uh, football publications he kept preaching them boys I have been here before you've got to get ready to play and here is more stretching Mark Richt is just really uh, created continued I should say the, the traditions here at Georgia but he is he's put his own stamp now oh, on this program absolutely we identify with him with this Georgia program I look down there and 21 and 0 all time at home versus non-conference opponents and just to show that he's up to date with the times he now has his own website he yeah. is going to do a blog now that Georgia fans can read that'll be there'll be a new post tomorrow I have to tell you the most interesting comment. I'll tell it right after this play. <laughs> and this one incomplete. I was asking, I was asking about, you know, he looks so laid back. He's so calm on the sideline. I mean, look at him. Does he look like he's upset? David Pollock, the great defensive lineman here, turned around and said, I want to tell you, that is the most intense man. He said, when he gets upset, Woo, you do not want to be around him. And I loved it yesterday when Cor Corey, Corey Irvin said, turned around and said, man, when Coach Rick talked, he gives me chill bumps. <laughs> <laughs> when Coach Rick talks, he gives me chill bumps. Well, this Georgia drive stalls at the 37. And the punt coming to Antonio Brown. Wow. 
Fair catch. That one brought rain. <laughs> At the 16. 21 nothing. And Central Michigan gets another opportunity here at the end of this second quarter, Dave, to maybe get something going and get some points on the board before halftime. Yeah, this is a huge drive for them. They have got to get something. I mean, we're talking about team. Look at the, the consecutive 30 point plus games. I mean, we're talking about a team that scores. We're not talking about an offense that sits there and sputters. And I can tell you right now, that head coach, you don't want to stand near him. Look at him. He's picking out everybody. I mean, you look at Lefevre. Look, I mean, look at the eight for 13, 31 yards rushing. Lefevre has none. Pull that ball down and do something or pass completions. There you go. Gets a block, turns the corner. And out of bounds. Well, Dave, you've been waiting all day to see Lefevre run the ball, and there it is. You know, he got a good block that time. He had the backside. He got a good block, backside block right over here. You're going to see the hole open up, turn him back to the outside. Now, look, you see that? Even if he only picks up five to seven yards, good block downfield that time. I think it was Antonio Brown, number 27, who got that block. That's the way you run this offense. A 16-yard pickup. First down for the Chips. Too tall and out of bounds. That was a terrible pass. That slid out of his hand. I'm wondering whether with this heat if his hands are wet because that ball sailed. That was 10 yard, 10 feet over top of the head. And that young man right there, Antonio Brown, is his favorite receiver. Yeah. Antonio is uh, quite a talent. He was being recruited by Butch to go to West Virginia and stayed in touch with him. And when Jones came back to assume the head coaching role at Central Michigan, he talked to Antonio Brown to coming with him. Well, 241 left. You've got a little bit of time. You need to come away with some kind of points so you can go in at halftime and say, hey, we're in this football game. Run! The favor up top, but a oh. great catch at the 36-yard line. And there he is, Antonio Brown. <laughs> Way to call it there, partner. You talked about his talent. I can see why Lefevre didn't run on that one. <laughs> I like the result better. I'm a Monday morning quarterback. Little post pattern, dart back inside. Look at this stretch. You talked about catching that football, looking it in. Now they're in scoring, almost in scoring position. Under pressure. Run the ball. And run it he will out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Second down. And, and Bob, that doesn't look like a very impressive play, but it picks up about four yards on the play. That's huge that you don't come up second down and 10 plus. He's just getting what he can get, pick up some yards. It's positive yardage. And we haven't seen any of that until no. this drive. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's got to be able to do this. He's got to be able to step up. Trust your offensive lineman. Now, if you're Georgia, you got to come after him, got to control that rush. Maybe just spy a little bit on him. Come a little softer, but under control. Quick out to Sneed. Stops it with 2.01 to go in the half. Rennie Curran defending. Now it's really important if you're a Georgia fan that you want to keep them out of the end zone. You might let them have a field goal try, but you do not want to allow them to have a touchdown with two minutes left, under two minutes. First and 10, Chippewas at the Georgia 25. Crowd's getting a little bit anxious here. They're all standing up. A little more pep in his step on this drive for Dan Lefevre. Looking. Incomplete. Boy, Lefevre took a shot on the sideline. <laughs> when he came rolling out, he squared up and he threw the football. I think they stepped on the back of his heel, too. His shoe came off. But again, he's squaring up here. And look at the big boys. The horses are coming after him. He got three red shirts. Now, that's what I call running to the ball. It was a good pass, good square up there. It's a close, close pass. But that's the kind of Lefevre that we've seen. Now, Georgia's got to answer. Here they come. They've squeezed down. They're going to come after him. Oh, he got and him offside. And they jumped. Free play. Lefevre to the end zone. And out of bounds. Kobla was down there. When I can tell you that Willie Martinez, the uh, defensive coordinator, he absolutely hates that play. 
When you get a hard count, that means your defensive line is not just not zeroing in on the football. You go on movement. Offsides on the defense, number 35. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. It's a free five yards. That'll drive coaches. You don't want to be standing near Coach Martinez when that happens. He's very intense. Doesn't like mistakes. Second and five. I think George is coming after him. Three receivers up top. As Lefevre gets a little time, but that pocket is up. Oh, but it's intercepted. Picked off by the Bulldogs. All the way. Touchdown. DeMarcus Dobbs did it. He got the interception. I tell you what, his thighs were on fire at about the 20-yard line, but he took it all the way. Dobbs is number 58. When that ball gets deflected, he reacts to the football. What a marvelous turnaround for Georgia. That's why, as Willie Martinez would tell you, you never quit. Now, I can promise you, he was looking for a lateral when he got to about the 20-yard line. <laughs> but what a play. Look at them all. That's, that's just a lineman's dream. Oh, man. And for Butch Jones, it doesn't get any better. He had a chance at least to come away with three points. Right. They had to have it. Instead, it's a big switch turnaround. Momentum is turned around. Now, all of a sudden, it's 28 to nothing, and you're going to fight. And, of course, for Dan Lefevre, he's suffering. He had a chance that time. You just can't touch the kick the football up. You can't tip it up. What a play. 78-yard interception return for DeMarcus Dobbs, a redshirt sophomore. And the kick is good. And, Bob, two things that happened on this play were really interesting. Georgia kind of crushed the pocket. They crushed it down, made Lefevre turn up, and you see the tip there, and look how quickly Dobbs is reacting back to the play to help try to make a tackle. Right in here is where he wants the lateral, but the big man just keeps on running. Look at this. He's got, he's got corners out in front of him. He's got C.J. Bird, the safety, out there blocking, but look at this pocket crush. Lefevre gets those happy feet, doesn't know what to do with it. He's got pressure. They kept him contained. And the big man made him pay. Oh, they're going to push him back down again. <laughs> Ellerby. Look at the big man. He's not gassed, is he? No shot. Look at this. <laughs> I know. I was looking at him. <laughs> this is how you do it, yeah. Marino. <laughs> That's right. His average is better than Marino's. <laughs> but what a lineman. I can tell you, that is a lineman's dream. He was reacting back to the ball. He's just going to try to help out on the tackle. Picks up the tip. That's why, as a defensive lineman, you turn and run to the football. When it's thrown, you turn and run. And look how it paid off for him. It's the first time a Georgia player has returned an interception for a touchdown since 06 when Troy Battle did it against Auburn. I Mr. Bet Dobbs. <laughs> it's the hero's welcome. What a moment. 28 0 Georgia. Mr. Dobbs is an official dog now. They may have a couple of his jerseys around. Now they got the penalty for the celebration, but that's worth it. It was worth it against the Gators. It's worth it against the Chippewa. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, short kick. And it's going to be taken by Pitts. Into Georgia territory, out of bounds, just shy of the 40. And 102 remaining in this second quarter. All right, now if you're Lefevre, can you shake it off? Coming up at halftime, our college football Saturday halftime show will have highlights of 
Number three, Ohio State in a battle royal today oh boy. at the Horseshoe against Ohio. Kansas and Louisiana Tech coming up after our game today, plus our recap here from Sanford Stadium. So the Chippewas have 62 seconds and 40 yards in yeah, front of them. They got great field position. Now, if you're a quarterback, you got to shake what happened off. You just got to shake it off. You got to have ice water in your veins. Now let's see what Lefevre's made of. Can he come back and strike him? He had a good drive last series. And the pass is caught. 30 out of bounds at the 26. And it's Sean Skurgan who made the catch and got his helmet ripped off in the process. Skurgan did a good job that time getting as many yards as he could. Now, no huddle offense. That was a good choice by Lefevre on that one. Out to the flat, Skurgan was wide open. Now, look downfield, shake it off. Never happened. Can he do it? Lefevre, complete up top. Wide receiver Bachheim inside that 15 down to about the 12. Cuff another tackle for Georgia. Well, now that was interesting. The corner on that time gave way too much cushion. You don't give him that much cushion. No, there's only 47 seconds left. And no timeouts. Yeah, that's right. Lefevre looking Buford's way, but I think he saw, head was all turned yeah. around. I think he saw Marcus Brown, number 11, come flashing in there and just decided to sail that one. Stops the clock. Second and 10. Second and 10 with 38 seconds left. Now, if you're Butch Jones, you need a touchdown. You don't need a field goal in this situation. If you're Georgia, get that crowd noise going. We don't want any audibles. That's what they're saying on defense. zone incomplete Buford defended by Dent and Bob the first thing comes to my mind is he has to throw to the end zone he's got 32 seconds left he's got no timeouts he's got to throw to the end zone this is a good throw deep to the end zone but Georgia knows that they're a smart defense they know let them catch it in bounds come up and tackle them they might not even get another play off 2,000 full throats as the Chippewas come to the line. The favor open. And it's a touchdown for Central Michigan. Lefevre with the touchdown pass, and the Chippewas are on the board at 28 to 6. Joe Bachheim. Boy, look Getting at this ball club <laughs> energized on the touchdown catch. And Butch Jones is getting him energized. There had to be a broken coverage that time. I looked out to the corner and Bachheim was so open. I mean, he there was nobody even close to him. Had to be a broken coverage on that play. You just don't get that wide open, not, uh, not when you're playing goal line D. adds the extra point and 28 to 7. Again, Bachheim is right there. Now look right, see right there. Look at that. There's nobody even close to him there. That's just a pitch and catch. That had to be a broken coverage. You just don't let him go on the line. Now look at that foot coming down. Wow. Is that foot close? Look at that foot right in there. And Lefevre says finally something happened, uh, but good. But Field. it had to be a broken coverage. Field judge Mike Washington was right there to eyeball it. And Lefevre gets the touchdown for his ball club. And Bachheim, the man who made the catch, he disappeared from our view <laughs> as he pulled it in. Bachheim, the fifth year senior from Grand Rapids. A five play, 40 yard scoring drive. And the Chippewas. Cut it back to a three touchdown deficit. And that's really, you've made an interesting call. That line judge that runs down that line, that is the one thing he is looking for is that foot coming down in bounds.
yards, and he had a perfect view to run right down the line and look at it. Uh, so there's not even a question whether it was good or not. That judge called it. I know they review every play, but that was good. He was in perfect position to make that call. Now, all of a sudden, you got 92,000 people that are going, hey, wait a minute. We were winning 28 to nothing. On a bounce, it's Ramarcus Brown. To the 43. Kicker Aguila with the tackle. 19 seconds left, a 35-yard return for the return man Brown, who hails from East Point, Georgia. Now, I'm not paying tuition for that, that person there. I want to tell you something. That's not one of my children. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> there is a bunch of them. <laughs> I don't think they picked him up from Dave Rowe will call. There's a dermatologist <laughs> at Buckhead. Clean that right yeah, up. All right. Now, if you're Georgia, do you sit on it? No, they throw it to Moore. And he's out of bounds at midfield. Well, you work your offense right now. You've got 14 seconds. You've got two timeouts. You've got enough time to get in a field goal position. You don't just snap the ball because all those big SEC games are coming up for Mark Rick and company. Mm -hmm. And they've got to get prepared for the big part of their season, which is coming up. That, that, they have a brutal schedule that uh, they have to face. Moore's fourth catch of the day. He was marked out officially at the 48. 14 seconds left in the half. Well, we know how strong this field goal kicker's foot is. Man, he boomed one last week. Stafford throwing complete to the 38-yard line. A.J. Green stretching up to get that one. Well, what great concentration. You talked about it to me during the week. You said A.J. Green is the real machine, and he is. Great concentration, runs a great route. The ball is actually thrown before he makes the cut. Now, the ball is already on its way. That's great communication between the quarterback and belief in your wide receiver. Now, can they throw another one like that with seven seconds, get out of bounds? Mm. I don't know Georgia how. takes a timeout to talk it over. How far would you try a field goal? Mark Rick told us said the wind makes a difference. He said his field goal kicker will come and say, well, I can make it from 60 this way, or I can make it from 55 that way. Last week, here's the field goal you're talking about for freshman Blair Walsh. And he drilled this bad boy 52 yards and had plenty of leg on it. Oh, that's good from 60. And you know what? He's got the wind at his back, Bob. I'm looking at the flags, and the flags are coming straight down the field. We'll see if Blair gets in there. Dogs have seven seconds with which to work before halftime. Throw it quick. Get it. Oh, and incomplete. King couldn't hang on. Ooh, this would be a long one if you're going to try it from here. And here comes Blair Walsh, the heralded kicker from Fort Lauderdale. He was rated as... Arguably the number one kicker in high school last season. And there's a look at the flags. Now this will may, be a 56-yard attempt. Now, they may do a pooch kick here, but uh, I think he's going to give him a shot. I want to see it. 56 yards. He's got the distance. But wow. And that will be the first half. So the dogs jump off to a four touchdown lead a defensive score to make it 28 nothing then the Chippewas come back and they get a late touchdown pass from Lefebvre to make it 28 seven here at the break the second ranked Bulldogs heading to the locker room. Let's go down to the field and James with the head coach of the chips. Coach Jones, what has been the most frustrating part about trying to stop Georgia's offense? Well, the big thing is, is we just need to settle down. We've misplaced some punts and some kicks, and we've given them good field position, and we can't do that. We need to just settle down and play our game, and we'll be okay. On the offensive side, you scored a touchdown, but it seems as though they've been able to stymie you guys for, for the most part. Well, the big thing is they've been able to get a pass rush on us, and we got to run the ball in the second half. We've struggled running the ball, so we'll get back to work at halftime and come out. we got to run the ball a little bit. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Back it up to Bob. 
Thank you very much, James. A 28-7 game at the half. Number two, Georgia leading Central Michigan. Stay with us. Halftime coverage straight ahead. We'll get you caught up with scores and highlights next, right after the break. We'll be sending it to our studios in Los Angeles for the latest in this second Saturday of the college football season. Our halftime score, Georgia 28, Central Michigan 7. For serious tournament action, more pros are reaching for Fluger Reels. Oh, yeah! Woo! All Fluger Reels are packed with high-quality components and innovative technology. The new Fluger Supreme features the patented Ultimate Brake System for the ultimate casting experience. Fluger, the choice of champions. It's time to get up. Move the back of our head and head on down to Memphis. To the music you love and the good times you're going to have. So roll on down to the river and get down to Memphis. You know I love the smell of fresh Genovese basil. Basil mixed in with our lemon butter sauce makes our chicken brine delicious. Goat cheese, sun-dried tomatoes, you know great ingredients make great food. Like figs. They add a natural sweetness to our chicken with port wine and fig sauce. Figs, apples, port wine, reduced down to make a wonderful sauce. Pair that with our chicken brine, you have Piatta di Polo. Two great flavors on one dish. At Carabas, good things happen around our table. My grandpa started our sawmill in the 40s. Eugene Knight and Sons, and I'm one of the sons. I'm his son. I got sawdust running through my veins. In this business, you're not just an expert on wood. You're an expert on aches and pains. This is me simulating pain. We stopped paying the BC way. It's fast, so we can keep on working. Goes right in, powder, boom! That's pretty fast. This is the saw my dad used to use. Nowadays, we cut wood the BC way. Fast. BC is a family tradition. In Regions, now there's an easier way to do something good for yourself while doing something good for the environment along the way. Introducing Regions Life Green Checking and Savings. You can earn more money with a savings bonus of up to $250. You can do more for the environment with features that use less paper. And you can do it all simply with free, convenient e-services. In short, you can get more green with Regions Bank. Regions, proud to be the official bank of the SEC. Welcome inside our College Football Saturday studios here in Los Angeles. Michael Lees, DeMarco Farr with you. We're counting you down to the game of the year next week between USC and Ohio State. But today, DeMarco, the Buckeyes had some unfinished business with Ohio, and they had to do it without Benny Wells in the horseshoe. Benny Wells on the sideline can never be a good thing for the Buckeyes. Dante Harden from the Bobcats says, hey, worry about me. I'm running through your defense here for a touchdown. Forget SC, you better worry about the Ohio Bobcats. And then, hut hut, help! Somebody get on it! The Bobcats, Bobcats do. Touchdown in the end zone. Trestle not liking it. The vest is getting a little wrinkled. Here come Ohio State. Vintage Big Ten football. Just run it right through the middle and just pound them until you hear glass break. And then Ray Small on the punt return. Beanie Wells on the bench. Everyone has to step up, including the special teams. And when you break a long run on the punt return, don't get caught by the punter. There he goes, small, no small man, came up big for the Buckeyes. Yeah, 69-yard punt return, Ohio State escapes with the victory. In the ACC, Georgia Tech going into Boston to take on the Eagles, and they beat BC 19-16 on the road. Nice win there for the Yellow Jackets. All right, DeMarco, we talked about this game coming up next week. 
number one versus number three. A trip to the BCS title game could be on the line when these two meet. Yeah, lots of things to talk about in this matchup. I want to talk about the SC offensive line. Not sure, not sure how good they are right now. They had such an easy time versus Virginia. SC threw for over 300, ran for over 200. They're going to get a big rude awakening when they play Ohio State. They're much stronger, much quicker, more intense. When you turn on the film, that's the first thing that jumps out at you. Yeah. It'll be a different test for SC this week. A lot of people want to see this game last January, but we couldn't see it again next, next January, yeah. <laughs> but we're going to get it in September coming up next week. Well, taking the stage later on today on College Football Saturday, Todd Reason, one of the best yet underrated quarterbacks in the country and his own conference. How so, DeMarco, considering what he did last year and last week? You know what? They say he's too short. He's generously listed at 5'11", more like 5'10", but all he keeps doing is rolling out, throwing touchdown passes. But I guess if you're taller than your head coach, Mark Mangino, then that all works out. He's tall enough. It, it helps when you're as tall as the coach. You're always looking down. Well, Kansas has won 10 straight games at Memorial Stadium. We'll see if they can make it 11 in a row when they take on Louisiana Tech. The second half action between Georgia and Central Michigan is coming up next. Enjoy the second half here on College Football Saturday. We have Le Cheveux de Montmel, Le Nicky Cool. Oh. Pierre! Ah, super for your victory celebration. Woo! Number 29! Come take the bubble bath, baby! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, you're not really a champagne guy, are you? Oh, heck no. Nobody did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. series generators are perfect for hardcore tailgaters. They provide reliable power for all sorts of things. They'll never stop us with that nickel D word. Come on, fire! Come on! Come on! And they're incredibly quiet. neighbors really appreciate Honda generators bring it from the grandstands to the infield it's where over a hundred thousand fans start cheering on Friday and don't stop until Monday to the historic super speedway where victory and survival in the chase for the Sprint Cup hinges on every turn if you plan to go to one race weekend this year this is it this is more than a race this is Talladega. To guarantee your seats to the Amp Energy 500, the Mountain Dew 250, and the Arca Remax 250. Academy Sports and Outdoors has it all. All the right stuff for sports, outdoor fun, hanging out, and looking great. Sports equipment, athletic and casual shoes, sports and casual wear for the whole family at low prices every day. Nike, New Balance, Under Armour, Reebok, Shimano, Remington, and more. Great selection, cool new styles, top brands, and low prices at Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price. Academy. I have amazing powers. I have stopped heart attacks in progress. I have halted disease in its tracks. I have stood up to cancer. Stood up to cancer. And won. Time and again. I am the impossible. I, I, I am University Hospital. University Hospital. Everything a hospital should be. The drama continues this season on Fox. You're watching the Georgia Bulldogs on Fox Sports South. Georgia finding the end zone on its very first drive of the game. Matthews Stafford to Muhammad Massaqua. Three yards on the touchdown play. The third TD pass of the season for Stafford. The ninth touchdown catch of his career for Massaqua. It's a 28-7 lead for Georgia at halftime here on the sidelines at Sanford Stadium. Now a lot of what we expected from Georgia busting out to a 28-0 lead. The crowd really erupting on the 78-yard interception return from Demarcus Dobbs. On the other side of the field for Central Michigan, a very high-powered offense ran into trouble. And as we bring in Dave Rowe, Dave, I agree with your assessment of the first half. 
that Dan LaFever was a little timid as far as running was concerned. But at the end of the half, Georgia with a relapse on defense, and LaFever throws the touchdown pass, Dave. Absolutely, Tom. That's exactly my thoughts. We came in watching, waiting for LaFever to run the football. He has run for over 1,000 yards. That's the other dimension of this spread offense. He did not run. They have struggled. Finally, on that last series, I mean, they have not been able to do anything. They've run up into a wall of red shirts. And Lefebvre has overthrown passes. The way you open up a defense is you run the football. This is that tip ball. Bang, it gets tipped, and Dobbs runs it back 70-some yards. So everything is going wrong. And it's a frustrating day for Dan Lefebvre. But all of a sudden, he got that running game going, and he hit Bachheim in the corner of the end zone for a score. That has been huge. That's what they have to do. You look at the numbers, I expect the Chippewas to come out, and I expect to see Lefebvre run the football and to have that same success. When Butch Jones went off at halftime, he said, we need to run the football. He meant Lefebvre. Back to you, Tom. And Dave, I think Mark Richt might have had a few choice words for his team. Maybe the halftime conversation changed a little bit with Central Michigan getting that touchdown. When we come back, we'll look at some other national champions from Georgia right here on FSN. If you owe more on your car than it's worth, even if you've been turned down, Landmark can help. I was about $10,000 upside down. We paid off his trade and sent him home in a brand new car with a lifetime warranty. I figure I saved about four or $5,000. Discover the savings and Atlanta's best selection for yourself. It's gigantic. 25 acres of unbeatable deals. Landmark is the Georgia giant. Always the best deal. Always. What if there were building materials with sustainable benefits that regular lumber couldn't offer? and cost efficiencies that lumber couldn't match. Materials that help protect homes against sun, wind, and rain, while delivering superior strength, durability, and consistency. You might not realize it, but these remarkable materials already exist. Engineered building products from LP. Build with us. Freedom of choice. It's what makes this wide open country of ours so great. So whether you're into paved roads, dirt roads, or no roads, Toyo makes an open country tire that's just right for you. No matter where the road takes you. I get out and I ride with my buddies every weekend, you know. We go out and get after it. Like today, we hit one section when everyone stopped, second guessed it, and I just kept going. Rock here, rock there. I just got a handful, and there she went. True all wheel drive, new active descent control, legendary ride and handling. Polaris, the world's toughest ATVs. Polaris Power Play sales event. Get to your participating dealer for up to $800. Being a younger fella, I didn't really expect them to treat me the same as they would an older person. But the service was awesome. It sparkles, it shines, and I love it. I thought the pricing was less than the other jewelers in the area. I was amazed at the selection. They had a lot of diamonds to choose from, and the quality was amazing. It was like the little green box said it all. And I think it was how wonderful they were and how knowledgeable, professional, and my favorite word, exquisite. I have amazing powers. I have stopped heart attacks in progress. I have halted disease in its tracks. I have stood up to cancer, stood up to cancer, and won. Time and again. I am the impossible. I, I, I am University Hospital. University Hospital, everything a hospital should be. Of the era, Sunday. You're watching the Georgia Bulldogs on Fox Sports South. No Sean Moreno taking it to the house from one yard out. The fourth touchdown of the season for him. 15th of his career gave Georgia a 21 0 lead. And at halftime here from Sanford Stadium, it is 28 7, the Georgia Bulldogs with the lead over the Central Michigan Chippewas. Now, here at halftime, Georgia honoring some of its national champions from tennis and gymnastics. And we'll start with the tennis team, which has now won. Let's start with gymnastics, which has now won four NCAA titles in a row. 
and nine overall, head coach Suzanne Yachlin. She has continued to have incredible success, nine NCAA titles. Her 26th and final season will be this year as the head coach as she will retire from the gymnastics team after this season. As for the tennis team, the last two seasons, they have been national champions and they were honored at halftime as well. The Bulldogs have six national championships in the history of the school, and that is second most of any NCAA Division I team. Manny Diaz, the head coach of that team, he has been a part of all those national championships here at Georgia. It's halftime from Sanford Stadium. When we come back, it's highlights and stats with Dave and Bob up in the broadcast booth. It's a 28-7 lead for Georgia over Central Michigan. College football here on Sports South continues right after this. One man, eight minutes, 60 Crystal Burgers. Paul Hunt just earned his place at the finals of Crystal Square Off 5, the World Hamburger Eating Championship. The biggest names in Major League Eating are battling it out right now for a spot at the Crystal Square Off 5 final table. And I'll see you at the championship. Where they'll face defending champion Joey Chestnut and international sensation Takeru Kobayashi. Find out how you can compete at crystalsquareoff.com. September 28th, only on Fox Sports South. They say good things come to those who wait. What do they know? Why wait when you can get the Yamaha ATV or Yamaha Rhino of your choice right now? The Yamaha Why Wait sales event. Now get payments as low as $69 a month till 2011 and up to $500 customer cash. Nissan set out to create the perfect on-road vehicle and in the process created a category. Introducing two crossover leaders from Nissan, the redesigned Murano, awarded as an IIHS top safety pick, and the versatile Rogue, named 2008's best new small crossover. Lease the 27 MPG Nissan Rogue, just $229 a month. Don't follow the leader, own one at your Nissan dealer now. football play by play from the sec xm are you on millions of fans 75 years of history 20 men's and women's sports 12 universities one site brings them all together secsports.com Scores, stats, and live streaming content. Exclusive real-time coverage of SEC championships. SEC fans and secsports.com. Some things just click. And we are back at Sanford Stadium here in Athens, Georgia. Halftime number two, Georgia leading Central Michigan 28-7. to Back upstairs here in the booth, Bob Rathman and Dave Rowe with you. And Dave, the first half, I think by Georgia standards, they looked at what they took care of in that first 30 minutes yeah. and said, well, you know, we just kind of took care of business. Well, I think they took care of business. They came out and dominated the line of scrimmage, and I think that was the big determining factor. But you remember, finish. The halftime highlights are going to be all about Georgia. Stafford finding Massapai out in the flat, looking out there, getting time to look downfield. Marino with that great speed back and forth. Look at the time he has to look downfield, again, find Massaqua. But then all of a sudden, late in the game, after Marino uh, came down here and scored this one, and Asher Allen returned that ball on good field position, they gave a little bit of life. Dobbs didn't, I shouldn't say. Dobbs did not. He had a lineman's dream, 78-yard re return. 
But Mark Richt was not, not real, real pleasant. I don't think he was real, real pleased with that last drive by the Chippewas. There's a look at the Bulldogs' offense. They scored 21. Of course, seven coming on the interception return for the touchdown. 70% on third downs, and in the red zone, they went three for three. But coaches are always striving for perfection. Absolutely. And, and Mark Richt is no different. We had uh, Jen Heldreth chat with Mark a moment ago. And, Jen, what did he say as we check in with you on the side, McDonald's sideline report? Well, you guys were right. He was not pleased about that last drive, specifically because his team was undisciplined after the touchdown. They gave up great field position. And he said Central Michigan did a much better job of protecting their quarterback on that last drive. Rick thought his defense had done a great job all game long bringing pressure, but they did not bring enough of it on that final drive. And Central Michigan made him pay. Okay, thank you very much, Jen. And now the dogs will have 30 minutes to, to make amends in yeah. Coach Rick's eyes. Well, you just know how tough that schedule is going to be, that long schedule, when they get into that SEC play. And you can't give up what coaches call cheap touchdowns. Brown returning for CMU from the eight. And very good field position for the Chippewas out to the 32-yard line. Dan Lefevre had, a, I don't want to say an, an inconsistent first half, but from what we thought we would see, the running and the passing, it was a very spotty first half yeah, performance. I, I like the word inconsistent. I think that's what he did. He just did not run the football, and that's the other part of this spread offense. That is so hard to defense. Now, Georgia goes in, they make some adjustments. They know they've got to get pressure. They know Lefevre is now all of a sudden saying, hey, I can run. Got to stop that part. And what you tell your defensive lineman is a little bit more controlled rush. Play clocks at five. You saw Lefevre look to the sideline. He, he was getting a late signal from the coaching staff. And this pass is caught up at the 39-yard line as Brian Anderson. Makes his first catch of the day. This is what the Chippewas do so quickly. They're on top of you. They make they make you make decisions real quick. They move the football. They chip away at you. And it drives you, if you're a defensive coordinator, drives you crazy. That's not the Lefevre that we saw in the first uh, in the first half. The, well, the first part of the first half. Now we're seeing a different Dan Lefevre. Pressure coming. And great heat <laughs> applied that time by Curran. Did you see Mark Richt? He's saying, who's he throwing it to? Where's he throwing the ball? He's not, he threw it to me. Lefevre felt that pressure, got rid of the football. He threw it over to Mark Richt, and there was nobody else there. I'm not talking about close. <laughs> Look at Mark Richt. That's the intensity oh, yeah. you were talking about earlier in the first half. Chips two for seven on third down. This is a big one. Got to keep this football away from Georgia. If you're Georgia, you got to stop them. Around the motion man. The fever. Hits it to Brown. He sidesteps one man, gets the first down at the Central Michigan 48 yard line. C.J. Bird made the tackle. Boy, and I can tell you from a defensive standpoint, I've been out there many, many times with quarterbacks like a Dan Lefevre. It is really frustrating. It's a three-step drop, and bang, he gets rid of the ball so quick. You just don't have time to get there. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Yamaha ATV. Georgia just rushing four men, not bringing any pressure. Lefevre cranks it to the outside. And it's Bachheim, the man who made the touchdown catch in the first half, tackled by Evans. Boy, and these are set-up plays, Bob. What they do is they throw that little tight curl on the corner, and the corner, Brian Evans, drops back about seven, eight yards and then has to come up. So they're just chipping away at you, chipping away. The minute you come up, you make one mistake, and bang, he's going to hit you with a long one. So play discipline if you're Georgia. That's what they're saying in the huddle. Play with discipline. Lefevre 
in double coverage hits his man at the 32 yard line is this the same quarterback we saw in the first half looks like a different team <laughs> i know antonio brown picks up another chippewa first down now fake the play come out here look downfield find your Make wide sure you receiver First and ten. Man open. Pitts. And touchdown, Central Michigan. Gene Pitts made the grab and took it in for the score. Boy, and on the Chippewa side, they are jumping and shouting. On the Georgia side, they're almost stunned. You realize they just drove the football, something that they didn't do in the first half. Now, all of a sudden, you turn it around. If you're a Georgia fan, you're saying, hey, wait a minute. And there's Mr. Intensity, Willie Martinez, and you can see that look of disgust. He wants to get his defense over here where he can talk to him. Andrew Aguila in to kick the point after. Central Michigan just took it. The length of the field to start this third quarter on the number two team in the country in their ballpark. And 92,000 are eerily silent oh. here at Sanford Stadium. Well, let me tell you what Lefevre did. Watch those happy feet. He gets pressure. It's in the pocket. He goes down. He doesn't see the completion. But he throws to a target. And look how wide open he was. I mean, we're talking about he had five yards. He ran in again. I wondered if that was broken coverage. A 32-yard touchdown pass to Gene Pitts. And the chips are down 14. series generators are perfect for hardcore tailgaters. They provide reliable power for all sorts of things. They'll never stop us with that nickel D word. Come on, fire! Come on! Come on! And they're incredibly quiet. neighbors really appreciate. It doesn't cost anything to go to college. A house costs probably like ten dollars or something. And a new room for my baby brother costs seventy cents or about like seventy-five cents. Call Queensboro National Bank and Trust. Academy Sports and Outdoors has it all. All the right stuff for sports, outdoor fun, hanging out, and looking great. Sports equipment, athletic and casual shoes, sports and casual wear for the whole family at low prices every day. Nike, New Balance, Under Armour, Reebok, Shimano, Remington, and more. Great selection, cool new styles, top brands, and low prices at Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price. Academy. The drama continues this season on Fox. Junior Gene Pitts, wide receiver from Lansing. With the touchdown for the Chips, they've scored on each of their last two possessions. This one going 68 yards and six plays. Dave Rowe, this ball club had 134 yards of total offense in the first half. They pick up 68 in that drive. Oh, it's a different team. It, it is a huge different team. Now, the little squib kick did not work. And Chandler fell yeah. on it. Yeah. Lefevre now 16 of 29 for 175 yards and two touchdowns. And it's, and it's all about confidence. I want to tell you, he was rattled. And all of a sudden, he started to run the football, and he gained some confidence back. And that's what he has been known for, his running and his passing, a combination of both. And all of a sudden, he got that confidence on that last drive. And oh, boy. Now. Lefevre on that yeah. drive was five of six. Yeah. 
Now, what can his defense do? And a lot of times an offense will lift a defense. And now Stafford takes a timeout. Wow. First series. First series, you have to burn a timeout in the second half. Mark Richt is not going to like that. The Chippewa offense has been high-powered and has been for a long time. This is a club that scored over 30 points. We yeah. showed you earlier in the consecutive games. Look at where they were in the NCAA rankings last season. They're up there in the in the upper echelons of 1A football with their rushing and their passing. Of course, all of yeah. that contingent on Lefebvre's play. The big question when they play BCS teams is can they stop them? Yeah, and we talked to Tim Banks, who's their defensive coordinator, and he said one thing we have got to do is run to the football, and they're doing a better job. I'll tell you this, man on man, they will not beat Georgia, but if they run to the ball and get some breaks, it can make a huge difference in this game. Chris Durham takes it up to the 48 on the reception. Matt burning the tackle. Now, I can tell you this from Georgia's standpoint. I know Mike Bobo, and I've watched him both as a quarterback and as a coordinator. He will not change from what his game plan is. His game plan is solid. They scored 28 points in the first half. Well, 21 of them on offense. There you see Mike Bobo in the lower part of the screen right there. But he will not leave his offensive game plan. He's not going to panic. He's going to stay under control. That's what Georgia needs to do. Find Moreno, look out there, find Massaqua, and let Stafford manage the game. No shot. Stiff arms down the sideline. Touchdown. Two yards, ladies and gentlemen. That was impressive. Did I say find Moreno? <laughs> they found him. Well, you just don't abandon. You don't panic when you're on this level. If you're running for a national championship, you've got depth at every position. You're there for a reason, and that's one of the reasons that you're there. A guy like Noshan Moreno, a guy who can run the football. And the kick is good let's take another look at a terrific run down the sideline i'll tell you what i was impressed with the stiff arm watch the stiff arm right in here bang he just pushes him away and runs the last 25 yards in and what a what a dive watch this again watch this dive he just pushes the defender away and watch this dive for the end zone he just gets inside the pylon you see how it broke the ball came across and broke the pylon. If it touches the pylon, it's a touchdown. He was airborne. That's a touchdown. And as soon as that ball breaks the plane, absolutely, the play's over. Down to Jen Hildreth. Well, Bob, I am right here on the sideline, and I got to see Noshawn Marino run by up close and personal. Let me tell you something. You guys always talk about that quick move that he goes, cutting back, changing direction. I have no idea how any defender can keep up when he makes those moves at the speed he makes them. Let me tell you what, sitting here looking at it from five yards away, you can see why he got into that end zone. Thanks, Jen. Our McDonald's sideline report. Marino now. 117 yards rushing. Yeah, and you know, Jen talked about that, and we've talked a lot about it. We and he's compared all the time to Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker was a much different runner. Herschel Walker would put that head down and would run over you. Herschel Walker did not have the lateral speed that uh, Noshan Moreno has. He just didn't have it. But I'll tell you one thing: that young man, and he's like a train coming down. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> And the kickoff goes yep. out of bounds. Well, you don't want to do that. You just yeah. scored. You just had a great drive. You don't want to give them a free ball, move it out to the 35-yard line. That's where you turn around and say, hey, what happened? And again, it's John Fabris there. The ball will be put into play on the 40-yard line. Up at the 40 yeah, this year. Yeah, and that's right, the 40 this year. I mean, that's, that's a real penalty. You can't do that. Yep. You can see right there he's upset. Yeah, Blair Walsh. Can't do that. 
Well, it's just too much of a penalty. You give the ball to the 40-yard line. I mean, you're talking about going 25 yard, yards and you're in scoring position. Now the Bulldog defense. Back out and deploying to go to work against Lefevre, the chips. With the football. And they'll run it on this first down play. It's a 35-14 ball game. Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator for this Bulldog outfit. And, you know, it's uh, I like been him. kind of a strange yeah. day for the D. Yeah, it has been. I like Willie Martinez. I really, he's the kind of coach that I can play for. I know he's in your face, and all the guys will go, ooh, man. But he tells it like it is, and he's honest about it. Oh, Gene Pitts, how about that Boy. grab? He almost got his head taken off that time. Did you see that his head ripped back? I don't think it was a face mask, but boy, did his head. What great conference, you know, just concentration by Pitts. He got smacked up the side of the head. Watch again. He's going to come from the left side of your screen. There he is crossing. Now watch right there. Ooh, he just got a shot up in the head. Then Prince Miller jumped on yep. his back. First down, Central Michigan at the Georgia 45. George has got to make something happen. You got to have a play right in here. And wrapped yeah. up is Volney, Curran, and Wynn combining. Now, if you're Georgia, you have to play that disciplined defense. It's real easy to try to react over to where the ball carrier is. But you've got to remember that Dan Lefevre, he's the threat. He's the quarterback that keeps the ball. Georgia only going with three down linemen. And this wow. one is going to be caught by Anderson. To the 23. That gets a wow from Dave Rowe. I want to tell you something. Lefevre that time threaded. He threw the ball over the defender in front and before the defender in the back. He's coming down to watch at the bottom of your screen. See the defender right there. He just lofts that ball in there. It's a perfect pass. He threw it over top of Byron Evans, number three's head, and threw it before C.J. Bird, number five, came in and leveled him. Just a beautiful touch pass. The fever comes to Hoskins. Justin Hoskins' first catch. The senior began his collegiate career at Notre Dame under Tyrone Willingham, and when the coaching change was made to Charlie Weiss, he left Notre Dame and ends up at Central Michigan and told us earlier in the week, I was meant to be a Chippewa. <laughs> now you see the play being signaled in there. They have two decoys and one live one. This is a big down. Georgia puts four defensive linemen. They're out of that nickel package now. Now they're playing man on man. Big man on big man. Good pressure right here. And Lefebvre pulls it down. To the 11, first down, Chippewas. Well, now the backside had great pressure. I think that might have been Lomax who came from the backside and had great pressure all the way around from the top here. Watch the pressure. Now, Lefevre steps up. He finds that little seam in there, and he's off and running. That is what kills the defense. That is hard if you're a defensive lineman. That's what he didn't do a whole lot of the first half. No gain. Geno Atkins, the defensive tackle. Number 56 was there. Boy, and I like Geno Atkins. I really think he's a real force up there. Just a junior, number 56. But he has great hand strength. He plays into his defender, slides to the football. I want to tell you, Georgia is solid across the front. They are big time players. You look at Corby Irvin, number 95. He got a wow game last week. That's big when you get one from uh, Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator. Lefevre throwing to the end zone and through the end zone. Out of bounds, incomplete. And Bob, this is a big down, but let me tell you what really helps the defense. You know it's it's first down, and he has to get to about the two-yard line for a first down. I say it's third down, I should say. You don't think the quarterback, you say, hey, let him go ahead and run it, because those defenders are not dropping back, and they'll make him come up and pay for it. He's got a throw to the end zone for a touchdown. If he runs it, he could get hurt. This is not where you want
want to run it. Flushed out and uncorks it. This is where the field position really pressures that spread yeah, offense. Absolutely. Because you don't have to drop back like that, and Lefevre knows that he's bad. But again, look, they bring pressure on him. See how quick they're in his face? And these guys can run. Lefevre has nowhere to throw except out of bounds. Good cover on the corners that time. I see Asher Allen, number two. He's got his locked up man on man. That was not a great series for uh, the Chips. A 30-yard field goal attempt. Andrew Aguila. Trying to give the chips three here. He had a 20 yard field goal last week against Eastern Illinois. Strong kick and good. So Central comes away with three on the drive. And with 828 remaining in the third quarter, we've still got a ball game here in Athens. Number two, Georgia, 35. Central Michigan, 17. If you owe more on your car than it's worth, even if you've been turned down, Landmark can help. I was about $10,000 upside down. We paid off his trade and sent him home in a brand new car with a lifetime warranty. I figure I saved about four or $5,000. Discover the savings and Atlanta's best selection for yourself. It's gigantic. 25 acres of unbeatable deals. Landmark is the Georgia Giant. Always the best deal. It's obviously like one of the best burgers I've had. This thing is massive. So, what'd you think of the burger? They're amazing. Would you like to meet the chef? Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. Going in, this is our chef. Hey, how you doing? I understand you enjoyed the burger. I did. I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. There's nobody cooking. There's cooking going on. We got an order up. Let's go. That's a Hardy's thick burger you just had. The restaurant style Frisco thick burger back at Hardee's. So, you want a brand new Honda. Why not do business with the very best of the best? Ed Boyle's Honda. Right now, it's Ed Boyle's Honda. You can be driving home a brand new 2008 Civic for just $179 a month. Or, for just $199 a month, you could get the best of the best. The all-new 2008 Honda Accord. Or, check out the totally redesigned 2009 Honda Pilot at Ed Boyle's Honda. Parkway, Marietta. He says, load up the faces, follow the crowd, hear all the brave lies. We're gonna get real loud, just so it can be a fast ball. Smoke from the mound, we're gonna end this thing in just one swing. I'm gonna knock one down. Braves Live, before and after every game on FSN Sound. Today's game is being brought to you by McDonald's. Our dog day Saturday turns to evening time in Athens. 35-17, dogs leading Central Michigan, 8-28 in the third. Three possessions in this second half and points on all three. Now the dogs get it back. And another short kick to give Georgia what? outstanding field position. What is that? I'll, I'll tell you, they were trying to hit somebody, and they literally did hit one of the Georgia players up front. But they're quick reacting to the football, and he came away with the football, number 19. Who would? Uh, 19 Sanders. That was Cummings. Cummings. Sanders Cummings. Well, the here's ball. Our, here's yeah. our game summary, okay. Dave. Excuse me. For those who are just joining us this afternoon, Marino now 117 yards, his seventh career 100 yard game in 15 games, we might point out. And then Central Michigan getting it turned around offensively here in the second half. I'm Matthew Stafford. I'm coming out. I'm going to plow this football down. I'm going to take back control of this game. I may look for some passes, little dinks in that. Move around. He's got nobody to throw to. Runs it out yeah. at the 46. Chased out by Zombo. 
but he picks up some positive yardage, but I'm going to take control. This is called game management. This is where you look down. You don't force the ball into trouble. You don't want to have a turnover in this situation. You tell those running backs, lock it up. That means get that elbow down, tuck it inside. Don't have that ball pulled away. And if you're Matthew Stafford, don't throw it into coverage. Second and seven. I had a coach named Madden used to always say, do what you do best. That's John Madden. <laughs> Play clock down to two. Stafford with a deep ball to Massaqua. Touchdown. That's what he does best. 54 yarder. Boy, and give credit where credit is due. And that credit is due to that offensive line who let Matthew Stafford sit back there, look downfield, give that little little hitch, and he had Massaqua on a just a go pattern. Again, we know the mechanics that Stafford had. They are outstanding mechanics. He's got game management. He's going to be tough to beat. Blair Walsh with the kick. Beautiful protection. Yeah, absolutely. Look at this. You don't see any penetration. They're coming, but they're coming late. He's allowed to step in it. And he finds Massaqua, who just gets even on the corner. Now he breaks behind him, and look at that speed. I'm talking about he is pulling away. He is pulling away. And I think that was Tommy Mama that he beat, who's one of their best, uh, one of their best defenders. Massaqua's 10th career touchdown. Two plays, 57 yards. And it also speaks to the point about Central Michigan. When they run up against the big boys, the last two years against the BCS schools, the defense has given up, on average, 48 points a game. And here's Georgia with 741 in the third, sitting on 42. Yeah. Let's go back to Jen for more on Matthew Staff. Well, we just got a great example of how strong Matthew Stafford's arm is. Nobody's ever really doubted that. And, you know, he said it comes by him naturally. So I decided to go to the family and get some real story. His sister, Paige, who's all senior here at Georgia, told me that they were kids about 10, 12 years old out in their front yard throwing a baseball around. And Matthew said, OK, OK, back up. I want to see how hard I can throw this. So he rears back, lets go of the baseball. It ricochets off a tree and breaks a window in the front of their house. Well, the two of them are scared to death, terrified of their dad. Dad comes down, sees what happens, hears a story, laughs and says, hey, that's a good throw. <laughs> <laughs> and the return by Antonio Brown and a penalty flag. That will be dropped back at the 21 yard line. I'm not sure there weren't two penalty flags on that play. There was one thrown back on the 20 and then I think there was one out, out of bounds for a late hit. Sure looked like a late hit when you're running on the white stuff. We'll sort it all out. Stafford now is 16 of 24 for the afternoon, 192 yards and two touchdowns. And Bob, I had the fun enjoyment of doing his freshman year, and I watched him, and I want to tell you, he's got a rocket for an arm. But he was wide-eyed. Everything was fast. He was trying to figure out the game of there football. There were two fouls on the play during the return, holding number 84 on the receiving team. That penalty will be half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. Then, after the play, dead ball, personal foul, number 50 on the kicking team. That'll be 15 yards. It'll be first and 10. Yeah, when you're running on the white paint, by the way, you can't hit them. They're out of bounds. And you can see when he makes this cut and he gets out of bounds, he's on the white. You can't do that. You got to have discipline. That's just a, that's careless. And that's just a mistake. You can correct it. You don't want to take away the enthusiasm, but uh, can't do that. Dan LaFever waits, changes, looks for the late call from the sideline, tells his lineman, still plenty of time on the clock. Krauss yelling because they think they have a, here, I'm waiting for an audible. And it's Sneed with some 
Good adjustments after the catch. First down, chips the 43. Forty-two seventeen dogs. Seven twenty and rolling in the third. Incomplete intended for Sneed. The offense has been clicking, but a big play in this one is our landmark dodge. Big stop of the game. And look at the pick and the return <laughs> by Demarcus Dobbs. Yeah, that's a lineman stream, and it's a reward for a hustle. That's exactly what it is. It's a reward for hustling. He never thought he had a chance at that. And that is a huge, big difference, seven-point swing both ways. The chips were getting in scoring position. Lefebvre turns back and deflected incomplete. Sneed, again, the anticipated receiver that time, but... Boy, Lefebvre with all kinds of yeah. heat. I want to tell you, one of the marks of a defensive lineman is not what you do in the beginning of the game. And that's what Willie Martinez, the uh, defensive coordinator, stressed. It's what you do in the third and fourth quarter when your tongue is hanging out. And let me tell you something, the dogs are coming after them. They got the heads down, they got they got the, all their weight on their hands, and they are coming off the ball. In Georgia territory to the 46 and a first down. Now I want to tell you I know the score is not indicative of it and I know Stafford's had a great game but I am getting more and more impressed with Lefevre. Now I see that offensive flow and Butch Jones the head coach is saying now you don't see him yelling as much. Hey they know that they're outmanned in this football game. They know they didn't have a great shot but they're moving the ball. They are going to be a force. But Georgia, no quit. Let me tell you something. The dogs, are they've come to play. Hoskins. Just a couple of yards before Ellerby stopped him. You know who I haven't caught, I haven't seen a lot of today I was really impressed with? Ellerby, number 33, the middle linebacker. I really like his play. And he told me, he said, man, I freelance too much. My footwork wasn't ready. But I'll tell you one thing, that is a football player. When he comes to play, he can flat out play number 33. you got to love his heart. Full time all the time. He's got a full time motor. And this one is incomplete. And again, Mark Richt is complaining there should have been a flag. God, who's he throwing it to? He's about five yards out. Look at him. You better back up, coach. You know, I, th I thought the ball boy might get this. This was thrown perfect to him, but he didn't leap. Or maybe oh, the water. Come on. You know, it's not, <laughs> yeah. not the ball boy. How about the water girl? Yeah, the water girl. <laughs> That's right. That water girl's kind of special on this side. Yes, she is. <laughs> Big down now here. Georgia needs a rush. Those four horses up front are going to come. Pressure complete. Can Brown turn it into yardage? No. Rashard Jones with the tackle. Check out the pressure on Lefevre. Oh, I want to tell you something. Lefevre's not seeing a lot of these completions because he's down on the ground. He's getting hit just about every time. He's had a lot of he's had a lot of shots. That's D'Angelo Tyson. But I want to tell you how neat it was out on that corner. I watched the corner come up that time, and I'm pretty sure it was. I don't think it was uh, Allen. I think it was number three Evans. But what he did is he came up. And he just kind of squared and broke down. He didn't let him get outside, didn't let him get inside. Brought up this fourth down. Hartman with the punt. Trying to get it away, and this is wow. going to be touched at the one. Great coverage by the Chips. Yeah, one of the, one of the things that the coaches told us was we're going to do a rugby-style squib type of directional punt. That's the results of it. Nice stop. A 40-yard punt. 
backs the dogs up to their own one when we come back. There's only one utility vehicle that can do it all. Only one that can outrun. Only one that can outpull. Only one that can outride. And only one that can outwork every utility vehicle out there. Only Ranger. Hardest working, smoothest riding. Get financing as low as 2.99% and up to $800 during the Power Play sales event. The interaction studied in chemistry may be between two chemical substances or between matter and energy. <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Bergwood, your new car is rolling. It's not stolen. I just bought it. It's going to hit that truck. Please don't need to swear. <laughs> oh. Hot car, huh? It's on fire. Do you have new car replacement? Hmm? Call Allstate to sign up today. Are you in good hands? In the SEC, we proudly stand by our numbers. During the 2007-2008 academic year, SEC teams captured five national championships, while eight student athletes were honored as the best in their sport. It was a banner year in the classroom as well, as nearly 50% of our student athletes were named to the SEC academic honor roll. Whatever the arena, our numbers proudly tell the story of the Southeastern Conference. The SEC, our future is now. 217 and our Yamaha ATV fan of the game just overcome with emotion. <laughs> Robot man. <laughs> now, do you know how many are going to show up next week so oh. they can be the fan of the game? Oh boy. 506 remaining in the third. Georgia from its own one. And no shot. Hit at the goal line. Gets it back out to the line of scrimmage. Marino, 16th carry. He has 117 yards and two touchdowns to his credit. And you know one of the signs of a really well-disciplined te well team? No turnovers. Matthew Stafford has not forced the ball in. We haven't seen the... Uh, the uh, Bulldogs put it on the ground. They've not fumbled the football away. They've not given away those kind of advantages. Those giveaway takeaways, these are going to be huge in this season. If I'm Stafford, I'm just going to pull it back and throw it. Pressure, tipped, incomplete. Chandler, the intended oh. receiver. And Ballor said that he just about fainted. The middle linebacker, 43, Ballor, he had that football right in his hands. Look at him. He walks back going, oh, man. Valor, terrific last week. 16 tackles in the Eastern Illinois game. Look at 43 right there. It hit him in a bad place. Hit him in the uh. hand. Ah, uh, what might have been. Georgia, 7 for 10 on third downs today. This is a big down right here. Big for Georgia. You don't want to punt from the one-yard line. Stafford needs to go safe. Oh, he's going to run. Oh, boy. Here he comes. 20. Get out of bounds. First down at the 24-yard line for Matt Stafford. Sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. Well, that's good discretion right there. <laughs> it's a long season. But how about Matthew Stafford? He's backed up on the one-yard line. He pulls that ball down, looks downfield, does not make a bad decision. Sees the pressure, comes out, knows that he's going to get positive yards. Now, every coach on the sideline is saying, get out of bounds, get out of bounds. And he does. Outstanding play. 22-yard gain. First down for the Dogs at the 24-yard line. And this is Samuel. 
His first carry, the freshman from Cartersville, Georgia. This guy's got the potential to be a nuclear oh, sub yeah. for this Georgia <laughs> offense out of that tailback spot. We asked the guys yesterday, who's the fastest man back there at that tailback spot? And Noshan said, it's Samuel. Yeah, he said it was Samuel. And I want to tell you something. If you can run with the speed of Noshan and you say right away, he's the fastest, Richard Samuel, number 22, has got to be quick. I was thinking, what's the longest Georgia drive in history? This has got a chance of it. They started <laughs> inside to one. And Samuel with good hard running. Up to the 40, first down. Richard carried it six times last week against Georgia Southern for 34 yards. Out of Cass in Cartersville. You know, I just saw A.J. Green go in there and kind of just kind of pop the quarterback on the tail. It's kind of like, hey, don't forget me out here. I'm number eight. I'm way up the top of your screen. Marino back in. There's the audible. They try to set. He points to the safety. Show where the safety is. Doesn't see the blitz. Play action. Down the sideline and too long for Mr. Green. Well, you know what? It's amazing the little things that you see. I watched Green come through the huddle, and he kind of popped the quarterback on the tail. Like, say, hey, don't forget me. I'm over here. What does Stafford do? Yeah, I remember you, and he threw him a long one. Again, top of the screen, this is just a go pattern, but great speed. Good coverage right there. Little hand contact right there. I thought the official was going to reach in, but not really a catchable football. But that young man, as you said, and you said to me midweek, he has got all the tools. And the play blown dead. Well, that was an interesting call. They ran that all the way from the sideline. I think somebody might have lined up in the neutral zone. Unless he saw a flinch. Let's see. For the snap, false start, number 75 ah. on the offense. Five-yard penalty, remain second down. Keontae trip. Boy, you don't want them when you're, in, when you're an offensive lineman. You don't want those little flinches. It's five yards. It's a negative on that grade. But uh, Tripp has made a great adjustment moving in there. He's just a sophomore. With the injury to Trenton yeah, Sturdivant. Exactly. That's exactly the point I was going to make. You can't. It's hard to lose a Sturdivant, the player that caliber he is. But, boy, hasn't Tripp stepped up and played well for him. Marino. Got the penalty yardage back. And the yard. It's going to be. About nine yards to go on third down. That had shades of that last week pass when uh, when you saw Stafford throw that little sidearm to Marino. Marino in our talks, he turned around. He said, "What did you call that thing?" He said, "He said, hey, I just got the ball off. You catch it. You run with it." <laughs> and he did. And now they've moved out of trouble. They want to keep this drive. You want to make eight, ten, twelve play drives. Nothing pleases an offensive coordinator like Mike Bobo more than this. Put together eight, ten plays. Don't tell me they got another false start. That might have been Clint Bowling. They walked up. Dead ball, false start, number 72 on the offense, five-yard penalty. Oh, no, it was Vince Vance. A couple of hiccups here by the line. Boy, I just saw Marino walk up in his face, and I mean Marino walked up there and said, stay on sides, don't flinch, don't, don't get careless. This is where that discipline that we're talking about. A minute and a half left in the third quarter. Don't get sloppy. When you get tired, you make mistakes. Concentrate. Now that's real easy to say when you're standing up here. A lot of action going on, a lot of flashing going on. Marino. Nice cut back. Look at him get the defender! Oh, oh baby! Oh, oh. oh man, what a play. Look at the tail end of this. He jumps over him, and he wasn't, it wasn't like he was squatting down. He's up about four feet tall and gets an extra four or five yards again. 
Look at the fans react because they see it on that jumbo trying in the end zone. That was incredible. I told you he was going to come out and run with a vengeance. 29 yards for Marino and didn't use the trampoline. <laughs> What we say, eight runs last week, a lot of cramping, and no cramping up now. Samuel back in, and he's hit when he got the handoff from Stanford. Let's take one more look at an amazing run by Noshan Marino. Watch him set up his blockers and cut back against the grain. You don't see any slow up right there. And that fans went crazy when he went over top. Again, he makes cuts at full speed. That's better than Herschel Walker, who used to run you over. I never saw Herschel Walker do that. He put that head down and barrel through you. That's the end of the third quarter. They'll be talking about that play <laughs> all week. Wow. Three in the books and Georgia driving when we come back. 42-17 Bulldogs. Thanks to the industry's first electric power steering system, the Grizzly 700 stands alone as the world's number one big bore ATV. A hard act to follow until now. The brand new Grizzly 550 with power steering. So you can pound it all day without feeling it the next day. The new Grizzly 550 with electric power steering from Yamaha. Now get a $400 warm winch for just $69.95 plus special low financing. What if there were building materials with sustainable benefits that regular lumber couldn't offer and cost efficiencies that lumber couldn't match? Materials that help protect homes against sun, wind, and rain while delivering superior strength, durability, and consistency. You might not realize it, but these remarkable materials already exist. Engineered building products for... Border Bash 2008, Friday, September 12th at the Augusta Commons. Start the rivalry and start the party. Celebrate all things Georgia or South Carolina. Party with the Joe Stevenson Band, the Classic Rock All-Stars, the Georgia and Gamecock cheerleaders, Harry Dog and Cocky. Tickets are $10 and could sell out. Get yours now. Border Bash 2008, Friday, September 12th at the Augusta Commons. For more information, go to borderbash.net. That website, again, is borderbash.net. Everything for sports and the outdoors and more. Academy Sports and Outdoors has it. Sports apparel, athletic and casual shoes, equipment and gear at low prices every day. The right stuff for sports. The patio, barbecue, camping, fishing, fitness. Top brands and the low prices everybody wants. Whatever you do, Academy has the right stuff to help you do it right and look great. The right stuff for low price. Sunday. I know why they say that every dog has his days. Can't win every game we play. Oh, but you know we're gonna have our days. We'll be singing glory, glory to old Georgia. Glory, glory to old Georgia. Georgia 42, Central Michigan 17 as we start the fourth quarter. Bob Rathbun, Dave Rowe, Jen Heldreth, and James Verrett with you and our entire crew. Our dog day Saturday. And the Bulldog Nation still <laughs> scratching their heads over that <laughs> no Sean Marino. High hurdle. 42-17. And the dogs are driving, second down. Green. First down at the 20. A.J. Green. Well, the only way you can defend that is if you're the cornerback and you don't have much of a cushion because you've got a blocker out in front of him and then you've got Green coming. See, he slips back. Now, there's the blocker going to the left of your screen. Now, you got to come upfield and you got to try to make a play. If you don't get there before that blocker, he picks up 10 yards. And what a target. A.J. Green, six foot four. Can't miss him. And soft hands. Oh, yeah. He catches everything thrown his way. That's what you have to do today in college football. you got to be able to catch the football. A lot of guys with speed. Here's 
window shot. Touchdown. Twenty one yards on the scoring run. His career high is one ninety six against Troy and Marino now up to one sixty eight. And Bob, I just love the vision that he has into the hole. He sees the hole develop before he gets there. He makes great cuts on his play. This is just a little simple misdirection handoff, and you can see him just explode. Find the hole. He uses those arms, dies for the end zone. And I asked you, what's the longest drive in uh, Georgia history? There can't be one longer than that. I think it just <laughs> tied it. 99 and a half yards. <laughs> <laughs> and Marino with his third touchdown. Well, we've made a lot of references today, Dave, to the great Herschel Walker in a look at his running style. Well, Herschel Walker was a power runner. I know he had tremendous speed, but he'd put that head down, and there is a good example. I mean, he would run over you. He had that lateral speed, but I don't think he had quite what Moreno had. But let me tell you something, he could explode off the football, one of the greats of all time. And he should be the benchmark. He should be the benchmark that everybody's mentioned against. And you look at the career numbers for the greatest dog, Herschel Walker. All SEC records. And if my memory serves me right, Herschel Walker's uh, yards do not include bowl games. Correct. So it's and even no more impressive. Do. 49-17. And one of those touchdowns, one of those three touchdowns, was that hustle play. He didn't even carry it. He just recovered it in the end zone. I think that's the mark of a great running back. Brown on the run. Keeps his feet out to the 35. You talked about Marino, and I want to introduce the word that we've talked about one more time, and that's the patience that he has. A guy with yep. all this speed and all this talent and his cutting ability, but watch as he just sets up the block. That's exactly my point. He runs under control, and when he sees the hole, the hole will open. You've just got to have that ability to find it. There's always going to be a hole there unless you've got eight or nine guys up front. But you see his eyes wide open. I talked about with his head up, and look at the number of moves. He pushes people away. He runs away from them. He's very determined. And I pointed to that thing about him taking his offensive line and saying, hey, get with it, stay on side, and concentrate. He has just responded and shown them what it's all about. You lead by example. Close to a first down. Out to the 44-yard line as Lefebvre finds Bachheim. We've had just a wonderful day. Our dog day programming that actually began at noon Eastern time. And we picked it up live with our pregame at 2.30 Eastern. The game coverage and our crew has toiled in all this oh. heat and humidity today. And they have given you all some fantastic pictures. They have indeed, let me tell you. We call it cutting a good game. It's cutting. It's cutting edge. Wonderful. Now, can Lefevre come back? Tipped. Oh, and wow. nearly picked off. That was Cuff who made the late dive. Vance Cuff out of Moultrie, Georgia, sophomore. Yeah, he's one of those backup corners to Asher Allen, but he's getting some playing time, and he breaks on the ball. When that ball is thrown, every defensive back needs to break on the ball, and you see him diving in there, number 25, diving in, trying to get an opportunity. Third and one. If you're Central Michigan, you say, hey, just get the first down. They give it to Volney, and he's got it at the 46. I want to tell you how close that was to a miss, uh, miss foot. Carl Volney, he started off, he took a little sidestep, but the quarterback, Lefevre, turned around and let him reset. He actually stepped, and he would have had a, he would have had a motion. Then he gave him time to reset and look at him. He's going to find that little hole, put that head down. That's tough running in there. I want to tell you something. These dogs play defense. They come off the ball. They have great hand strength, slide to the football. They make things happen.
Lefevre. Incomplete, intended for Anderson. Boy, and Lefevre got leveled again. <laughs> he gets drilled from the backside. Georgia says, hey, we're not going to let you just sit back there. The dogs are coming, and he gets drilled when he lets go of that football. Lefevre's been on the ground 10, 15 times today or more. Give him some credit. He bounces back up. Here they come again. And they get to him. It took a while, <laughs> but they got their sack. Curran and, Lo and Lomax combining. Boy, it's a good coordinated rush. You're going to see it right there. There's 35. Watch him come for the football. He's on a, it's on a blitz. He's got the outside pocket. He runs through, and he runs through the quarterback. That's that speed that we talked about. And you see, again, the reaction by the backside. There's several people. You want several red shirts there. Another exquisite tackle by Curran. So Willie Martinez told us, said, hey, Rennie Curran is my kind of player. And let me tell you what that means. That means that he's got a motor. You talk about running all the time. He does his, ass his assignments. He's only a sophomore. But when you got, look at there, there's the head coach. When you got a head coach that grabs you like that, pops you on the head and says, that's my kind of guy. That's what he wants. His motor's running all the time. He's a weak side backer. Chips will punt. Would you ever see a bigger spread? Look at that, the width of the field. And it's going to be Logan Gray, the third string quarterback, on special teams and wrapped up as he gets to the 27th. 11.09 remaining in the fourth quarter here at Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia 49 and the Chips 17. When we come back, Mark Richt takes the plunge. every four minutes. See how at galottery.com. Built on a sports car platform with a more fuel-efficient 390-horsepower engine, the all-new Infiniti FX. Defining the performance crossover. Redefining luxury. SEC fans, FSN South takes you inside the Southeastern Conference like no one else can. Go behind the scenes and in-depth with your favorite players and coaches. SEC TV, Thursdays at 6.30 on FSN South. Sunday nights are now television's biggest night. It's the Sunday Sports Block. It all starts with Best Dams Top 50, Baseball's Golden Age, Amazing Sports Stories, and a classic IFL Championship bout every Sunday night at 7. The Georgia Bulldogs putting the hurting on the Central Michigan Chippewas. 49-17 here in Athens. Mark Richt and his team certainly having a lot of fun. We'll show you how Richt told this team to have a little fun earlier in the season in just a minute. We'll get this first playoff here and then we'll show you some special skills Coach Rick has. How's that for a little tease? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Joe Cox at a quarterback. 
his first taste of action today. And Caleb King with a carry. Jen? All right, well, I don't know how Joe Cox did off the high dive, but in just a second, you're going to get to see Matthew Stafford because Mark Rick took his team to the swimming pool to kind of give the guys a break, have a little fun. There goes Stafford into the pool, but let me tell you what. The guy who really had a show, look at Mark Rick with that backflip dive. I don't know what the heck you want to call it, but, you know, he told us he used to do that off a bridge back in Boca Raton. And when he was at Miami, he used to sneak into the pool there and do it. He liked to do it so much. Said a surfer friend of his did it. Chicks dug it, so he had to learn how to do it. I gave him a 9.95 on tell that one. You. I gave him a 10 for guts. <laughs> I, you wouldn't have got me to jump. That's a tense a 10 meter board. That's 30 feet in the air. Now, come on. <laughs> and you know the guys just loved it. Israel Troop with the reception for the dogs. Well, let me tell you, this last week, as they roughing the passer, oh. number 51 on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run. I didn't see First that down. penalty. That's 15 yards at it. But what I was going to say is, last week at this time, this is about the point where everybody got upset at Georgia. All the coaches did. There's the roughing on the passer, giving them a shove down. But this is the point when they felt like they lost their competitive edge. I don't think you're going to see Georgia lose the competitive edge right now. I think they're going to play with great discipline, great fire, just like their coaches. And they're not going to make There's nobody going to be loafing now. Casey DeRosha was the man penalized for Central Michigan. Nice stretch out grab by Troop. This is a redshirt freshman who gave up baseball to concentrate on football. A couple of years ago out of Tift County, Georgia, the number one receiver in the state. Well, you turn around and look at Joe Cox, and if you realize that Matthew Stafford is only one play away from getting hurt. So this young man may have to come in in the heat of battle. We've talked about the schedule that Georgia has. So they're trying to get him ready, game-type situations. These are Troop's first two catches of his career King to the 31 <laughs> Caleb King is another red shirt freshman Cox a junior from Charlotte North Carolina out of that football factory Independence oh, yeah. High School Independence High School that's where CJ Leak went and I think they won over a hundred games in a row Massaqua was part of that uh, of that great uh, record well, I think we're going to have a measurement. We've talked a lot today about the rankings and how Georgia started in the preseason number one and then last week, uh, even in victory, slipped to number two. You know <laughs> it's a tough neighborhood when you're picked by every magazine to win the national championship and you're not even picked to win your own division yeah. by the SEC media. I didn't understand that. I want to be honest <laughs> with you. You're, you're picked to be number one national champions, <laughs> and you're not picked to win your, uh, your division? Nah. Samuels hit back at the 32 behind the line. A good hit that time by the weak side backer, Baron Miles. They grow them young here, don't they? They become fans here, let me tell you. These Quick. are fans. 50 left in this fourth quarter. I got some buddy of mine that uh, buddies of mine that called me, Henry Barrow down in Florida, and said, you just wait till you see them dogs. We start them young. <laughs> So uh, I know Henry's enjoying this as all our dog fans. Cox oh. delivers a bullet to the 10 yard line. And Michael Moore with the reception. Boy, this is just an outstanding throw by Cox. He needed a, he needed velocity on it, and I want to tell you, he stepped into it and threw it to Moore. Little seam pattern. Right now, you got to throw it. You got to throw it before the safety gets over there. It's between the safety and the outside corner. And watch this delivery by Cox. You talk about laying back and throwing that football. That thing's a rope coming into Moore. A 24-yard gain. First and goal now for the dogs at the six. Moore 
has caught five balls today, a new career high. Champas out at the one as Gordy made the tackle. When you know Chappas has got to be enjoying that. Most times as a fullback, all you're doing is you're sitting up there and blocking, especially when you have the halfbacks like Moreno, King, Samuel. But you get a chance to shine out there, and Chappas caught that ball well, swinging out of the backfield, looking back. August 7, is seven and a half away from going 2-0. <laughs> Isn't he cute? I'm telling you. <laughs> Samuel gets it in for the score. Richard Samuel, the freshman, with his first career touchdown. And Georgia has 55 points on the board. I suspect this will impress the yeah. voters. Yes, I think it will. This is no, and this is no cupcake team coming in. Let me tell you something. These are the two-time MAC <laughs> champs. That's exactly right, back to back. And Georgia has just laid the wood to him today. The kick is good with 7.20 remaining. Richard Samuel keeps the beat for Georgia. 56-17 dogs. Why do you guys always get so many boxes? <laughs> All right, everyone, let's get started. Seen Schuler? Where's Schuler? Anybody seen Schuler? Is the cost of getting there getting in the way of doing business? AirTran Airways offers low fares to over 50 cities. Thanks for having us back. Sure. Where's Bob? Uh, travel cutbacks, but meet little Bob, ladies and gentlemen. We've outlined the inventory management process and we have some recommendations. If you look at the flow chart on page 19. Is this a joke? Trying to save your company a little money? Are you talking to me? golfer on earth what's next new gatorade tiger with 25 percent more electrolytes it's in tiger woods is it in you you've got to have the gear you got to get the goods you're cooking in eating out dressing up dressing down you need your school colors and you need them now well this is the place secstore.com the one-stop shop for sec fans with every conference team and all the conference merchandise right at your fingertips at championship time it's the quickest way to get officially licensed championship caps and tees great quality huge variety quick shopping easy clicking fast shipping every day anytime at secstore.com Today's game is being brought to you by Hardee's, Black Angus Beef and Melting Swiss on Grilled Sourdough, the Frisco Thick Burger, back at Hardee's. Hug has got some new girlfriends. <laughs> oh, that that's didn't so take cute. long. Yeah, I know. I looks at me, mm, yeah. <laughs> Out to the 27-yard line. That's on return for Central Michigan. <laughs> the Chippewas are going to change quarterbacks here. And number 18 <laughs> is Brian Brunner coming in the senior. He was the starter a couple years ago. Started the season in 06. And then in the game's first, uh, the season's first game, the second play of the opening game, he suffered a severe concussion against Boston College. That opened the door for Dan Lefevre. And Lefevre has, of course, taken over. Now Brunner getting some mop-up duty here with 7.09 to play. Oh, wow. good stick. Boy, that was a stick. Houston, wow. Outstanding. That's the kind of effort that yeah. Willie Martinez That's was exactly looking for late in the game. 
Yeah, you want to stand him up and drive him back. And I've disappointed uh, Dan Lefevre today. I know he had much greater aspirations for today. Lefevre 23 for 43, 250. Two touchdowns, one interception, that on a deflection. And I don't know, Bob, when I've ever seen more pressure on one person as it was Lefevre. Everybody said, if he can do this, if he can do this, he can do this. That's a, that's a tough call to put all that pressure on a young man. Volney runs it out to the 36. And yes, he is a man that Central Michigan has gotten behind to publicize. And James Verrett has that story. Was definitely hype, hype, hype for Dan Lefevre. And it's so big that he basically takes over a Major League Baseball park. They have a billboard outside Comerica Park in Detroit to promote him for a Heisman candidate. Now, he was a little bit embarrassed when he saw it, and actually some of the players teased him and called him poster boy. But he says through all of the hype, through all of the magazines and TV shows, he's learned that his comfort zone is on the field, and that's where he feels as if he's at home. incomplete and I want to tell you James when you throw for 3600 yards you got a lot of comfort on the football field how would you rate his day today overall well I think he was very disappointed in the beginning but all of a sudden he started coming back he started coming back when he ran the football and had some sex success then he found Bachheim out there that gave him a spark again looking back to the corner he threw a touchdown to Fitz and they had some spark coming back but uh, it was a dis disappointing start of the game for him. I know he wanted more out of himself, but he wasn't running the football. And all of a sudden he started running and Bob, it opened up the offense. Logan Gray, the deep man, back wow. pedaling on a booming punt that is gonna roll into the end zone. A tough day for the men from Mount Pleasant. 526 to play, 56-17, Georgia. There's only one utility vehicle that can do it all. Only one that can outrun. Only one that can outpull. Only one that can outride. And only one that can outwork every utility vehicle out there. Only Ranger. Hardest working, smoothest riding. Get financing as low as 2.99% and up to $800 during the Power Play sales event. Rechargeable battery myth number 106. Old rechargeable batteries make paper football a new kind of exciting. The reality is that old rechargeable batteries can and should be recycled. Rechargeable batteries are the power in cordless power tools, cell phones and cordless phones, video cameras and other portable electronics. When they can no longer hold a charge, however, old rechargeable batteries must be recycled. Visit calltorecycle.org or call toll-free. Got a car to sell? Go to VHicks.com. Millions of people go to VHicks.com looking for a car. I would never do a newspaper classified again. The best part is it's free. Absolutely free. All you do is you, you upload a picture. You put in a few facts about your car. Then someone searches for a used car like yours. Bingo. There's your car. Pops up in their search results. And it's free. How can you beat that? This is the best way to sell a car. List your used car for free and reach millions of car buyers at VHicks.com. Your online resource to find your ride. Search our online inventory. Thousands of vehicles are added weekly. When is the best time to invest in the stock market? The truth is we don't know. So here's an idea. Dollar cost averaging. Invest a set amount in a stock or fund every week or month. This way, when stocks are down, you'll be able to buy more shares. This financial tip is brought to you by the Rose Law Firm. Helping people in the CSRA with estate planning for over 29 years. We can help you protect your family long after you're gone. <coughs> the last time the Dogs scored 50 in a game was the Kentucky game in 04. They put 62 points on the board against the Cats. Lead it 56-17 here against Butch Jones and the Chippewas. Cox stays in at quarterback. And Richard Samuel behind him. Well, I'll tell you one thing, cheerleaders, they get a workout too. <laughs> and look at Samuel keep his feet and turn that into a big game. Let's go downstairs to Jen. 
Well, you guys mentioned that the water girl was a very special water girl here at Georgia. It is Catherine Rick, the first lady of Georgia football. Now, why do you do this? <laughs> Well, it's a little, it's it's fun for me to get out here and work for the boys and for the team and get to give back a little bit, but it's it's actually fun. It's hard work, but it's a lot of fun. Now, do you get to communicate with the head coach at all? Do you guys have any hand signals or anything? Oh, no. I stay clear of him all game long. But I got to think, the Georgia Water Girl probably has a little bit more pull than general. <laughs> I don't know, but I know to stay away from him during the game. He might come to the table every now and then, and I'll just look up and smile, but that's about it. Now, if I asked you to take your hat off so we can let the camera see you, would you, would you let me or would you say, girl, I got bad hair under here? Girl, I got bad hair under here. <laughs> I tried, but she's got that great smile. There you go, Georgia Water Girl. I think the best in the SEC in the, in the country, I'd say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Our McDonald's <laughs> sideline report, outstanding. Thank you, Jen. That's kind of like a family affair down there. He's got all his, they got kids down there and everything. My wife wouldn't bring me any water. <laughs> King comes back to make the catch. Tavares King, nicely done. Well, that was a good soft pass. Good decision there by Joe Cox on that play. He laid it up, and you can see the coverage and see King come back underneath. And I don't know what the flag was. I don't think it was offensive interference. <laughs> and the water girl with her approval. Number nine on the defense. The penalty will be declined. First down. So that catch will stand, and that's the first career catch for Tavares King. Well, there's a lot of guys getting their first in this game, but this is again the point where you don't want to have that letdown. They they seem like, and they don't care. On Georgia, they don't care if you're first team, fourth team, or what team you're on. You play with the same intensity as the first team. Just tripped up. He, he had yeah. it rolling as he hit the line. Boy, when he hit that seam on the outside edge, they had locked him down inside. They had it sealed. If you don't get upfield and turn that play back in and disrupt it, <laughs> he could have been off to the race. He was like a shoestring away from going all the way on that. The Chippewas are getting worn down, I can tell you that. They're, they're tired right now because there's such a big weight advantage. This offensive line, you go three deep and they're all over 300 pounds. Yeah, it really does become a war of attrition. Oh, he fumbled. And it will be Central Michigan football. Now, if that's, I saw Joe Cox pop his center on the head as if to say, hey, I pulled my hands out too quick. Matt Burning with the fumble recovery. You can't can't pull your hands out too quick if you're a quarterback. Nope, I don't think the ball got up there. Now he gave us he gave us uh, center a little pat on the head, but I think he had his hands far enough under there. A lot of times quarterbacks will pull their hands out quickly trying to get to a running play, but burning good re fumble recovery. And for the Chippewas, they stick with their Second unit, and that is Harris Cotton, who had that last carry. You look at some of those long faces on the Central Michigan sideline. Fifty-six, seventeen, Georgia. <laughs> Again, Cotton to the 38. So the first two preseason games out of the way from Matt Stafford and the Dogs. Now they'll turn their attention to the Gamecocks of South Carolina in Columbia next Saturday afternoon. And then a rare long distance non-conference road game as they head to Tempe to face Arizona yeah. State. And you said it was 100 and what today? 107. 107 today. Maybe oh, it's a dry heat. It, it is. That's what they told me when I played out there. I died. <laughs> I'll tell you. That's going to be a dangerous game. Boy, you look at Florida and LSU and you got Tennessee. I know they're not ranked, but man, you've got some horses that you're going to come up against. Cotton on the carry out to the 43. You know, Yes, we've shown you this 
the schedule and the ranked opponents that are ahead, but so many of those clubs are on the road. They don't have mm -hmm. the benefit yeah. of the 12th man here at Sanford Stadium. Boy, and they, they, they came out today. This crowd came out. I want to tell you something. Mm -hmm. The dog or pound or whatever you want to call this group, I say it affectionately, dog pound, but they came out and they made some noise today. No, Sean. He's just sitting up on the bench, the back of the bench, and he's laughing. But I want to tell you something. That young man, I think, turned this football game around with his intensity. I was really, really impressed with him. We mentioned at the top of our broadcast about the leadership abilities of Stafford. Well, we saw something from Marino today in the leadership oh, yeah. category. Absolutely. Very intense player. Butch Jones, he knows there'll be other days. I mean, he's in the, he's in the Mac. You see Marino over there. He's just strolling around. But he wasn't strolling around a little bit earlier. <laughs> and now they've got to play Ohio next week. And we were watching with great interest their battle with Ohio State earlier today. But their important games lie ahead in the Mac. very well be the final play of the game the final 25 seconds will count down God. that will do it Mark Richt is gonna make that walk across to shake but Jones hand here comes the Chippewa head coach they meet at midfield the ball game is over as Georgia wins it 56 to 17. Our Perlaris ATV toughest player. Let's take a look. Oh, I know who it should be. It should be Moreno. Let me tell you, I talked about his intensity. He do, he, he was he's an outstanding receiver. He, he, kept, he made a touchdown on that play. That play there, he got hurt. He made another touchdown here. He ran over top of people. He had a lot of yards. But let me tell you, when they needed a spark, he got their attention. I mean, he went up to his line. Look at him there on the left of your screen. He went up and let his line know. And what a play. That one will go down in Georgia lore. That was incredible. He hurdled him five feet up. He ran all over the Chippewas today. He is definitely the toughest player I saw today. 168 rushing yards, 30 receiving yards. Let's get down to the field and Jen with Coach Rick. Thanks, guys. Coach, uh, did you feel your team finished with the effort and the intensity you needed today? Well, it was better than last week for sure, and I think the weather had a lot to do with it. It definitely cooled down in the second half, but uh, and, and we had to be in a little bit better shape than we were last week, so being able to practice in the heat, I think made a big difference for us. And what do you think your defense did so well in this game in keeping that spread offense under control and keeping Lefevre under control for most of the game? Well, the big turnover, you know, when they were down in deep in our territory was huge because without that, it could have been a 28-21 game uh, when at the start of that second half. But uh, we did get the big play there. And, uh, you know, we just kept banging away. They're a very good offensive football team, and we just finished strong. Well, you got to feel confident about your tailbacks. Three different tailbacks scored today. We saw the magic Noshan can bring, but when you see those guys behind him, it's got to make you feel pretty good, too. Well, they're outstanding backs, no doubt, and, and it, definitely a lot of credit goes to the offensive line and everybody blocking downfield, too. So, um, you know, hopefully we can keep it going. All right, well, you, you mentioned it. Keep it going. Let's look ahead at what's coming next. That brutal road schedule begins right. next week. Do you feel this team is ready? Well, you know, league play starts, and we got a team that's got two days advance on us as far as preparation, so we got a long way to go. Coach, congratulations on the win. Bob, let's go back to you. Thank you very much, Jen, and congratulations to Coach Rick and the Dogs today. No Sean Marino, 168 rushing yards, 30 receiving yards. Matt Stafford was 18 for 28 for 213 and two touchdowns to Massaqua. More coverage after this. Thanks to the industry's first electric power steering system, the Grizzly 700 stands alone as the world's number one big bore ATV. A hard act to follow until now. The brand new Grizzly 550 with power steering. So you can pound it all day without feeling it the next day. The new Grizzly 550 with electric power steering from Yamaha. Now get a $400 worn winch for just $69.95 plus special low financing. Army 
strong. See what it's like at GoArmy.com. Every day at Golden Flake, it all starts with a special premium potato that longs for something more. More flavor and more crunch. Seeking a life of delicious variety and guaranteed freshness in every chip and every bag. That's what Golden Flake brings to the table. For us, these are the good times. Finding our way to your neighborhood grocery and into your basket headed home. Turning potatoes into the life of your party. Golden Flake, the South's original potato chip. Millions of fans, 75 years of history, 20 men's and women's sports, 12 universities. One site brings them all together. SECsports.com. Scores, stats, and live streaming content. Exclusive real-time coverage of SEC championships. SEC fans and SECsports.com. Some things just click. It's in the books here at Sanford Stadium. Georgia wins the big star today. No Sean Marino with Jen. Hi with No Sean Marino. No Sean, three touchdowns today. Boy, you got fired up after that interception return. But talk about the game for you and, and what was working for you in your offensive line. I mean, my boy Demarcus Dobbs caught a pick, took it to the house. That's my boy.